Good evening, my fellow Tottenham fans, and welcome back to the Irish Hotspur with your boy, Big Dave, bringing you the Tottenham fan call-in show. All you fan show members, the link is up in the community section if you want to come on and have your say. How are we all feeling after last night's 1-1 draw at West Ham? I get the unhappiness because it's a, a derby, but I do think there's a lot of overreaction. I'm seeing Andrew's system being called into play in that again, which I understand. But for me, I don't think the system is the problem. I think it gets us into good attacking areas. I just don't think we have the right players in the final third to be able to, you know, make the best of Andrew's system and stuff like that. And for me, that was very evident last night. Brennan Johnson, you know, one guy that I've been critical of this season. He started last night and he played very, very well. But he put about four or five crosses across that six-yard box last night. No striker in there. No presence in the box, you know, to get on the end of it. Sonny got found out up front last night. The guy cannot play with his back to goal. He got picked off against Luton for their goal. And last night, any time the ball came into him, as soon as they got physical, he couldn't get a hold of it. And um, for me, I think Ange Postacoglu also deserves to take a bit of sort of flat for this. I thought his substitutions were poor and ill-timed. Madison, um, on reflection, I thought he had a good game last night, but a lot of his work was from the deeper areas. Again, in the final third, he sort of struggled to have that real impact. Um, Bentecourt, he made the right change in that regard, but how he left Son through the middle for 80-odd minutes, 82, 83 minutes, and then brought on Richardson, I do not know. It's absolutely shambolic. For me, I knew that Son wouldn't we wouldn't be able to find Son in against West Ham. I was highlighting it days beforehand. Um, and I was saying that we should have played Richardson through the middle. Okay, Ange made that call, but you know, admit you got it wrong. I make that substitution earlier. Give us a more give us time to be able to go and find that winner, not with eight minutes to go, where you know West Ham with the final 10 minutes were pushing for a winner themselves and making a bit more of a tougher game. I think so. I'm disappointed in a lot of aspects last night, but I do think there's a lot of overreaction. You know, at the end of the day, we didn't lose the game, we still put points on the board. And if hopefully City can do us a favor tonight, beat Aston Villa, we've still got a game in hand, and top four is still in our grasp. I get we've got difficult games to come up and right now I think for me the biggest problem is consistency we're going to have to start putting that right we have to start winning games back to back we can't keep going through this win one draw one lose one got to start doing games back to back if we want to be taken seriously and get into Champions League next season but look let's welcome in a few people um, and then we will crack on and get some guests on as well We've got guns, football and things. Let's go. Come on, you Spurs. Good to see you in the building. Killing Kelly. I might join late. What time is the Irish Hotspur over at? Um, to be honest with you, I am hoping to get off for the second half of City and Villa tonight. So we'll see how that goes, Killian Kenny. We've got Dermatron in house. Big up, guys. Congrats on 14K. Do you know what? I completely forgot about that last night. I was so pissed off with the draw last night. I didn't even have time to think about that. But, um, yeah, thank you very much. I suppose it makes me feel a bit better today. Scotty Hynum says, big up to all. Come on, you Spurs. Good to see you in the building, Scotty. Davey Hall, big up. Whole crew disappointed about last night's game. Think we need to sort out set piece. Maybe our defence is a bit too small and we need to. We need a top striker. Um, Look, when it comes to set pieces... We did hire a set-piece coach under Conte and we, Ange Postacoglu chose to let him go and he did say he doesn't want a set-piece specialist coach. Um, for me, I would maybe look at rethinking that, especially because we're not one of the tallest teams. You know, you look at a lot of teams that we come up against, they're a lot bigger than what we are. So maybe it is something that maybe Ange might need to reassess in that regard or, you know, get someone else uh, rather than Ryan Mason on the defensive set-pieces. Uh, Donovan Oosterreicher says, hard fought point. It was never going to be easy against this lot. And look, that's the thing. It was never going to be easy. I actually thought we'd done well. I thought the back line was superb last night, bar the lapse in concentration for the set piece. But I actually blame the carry off for that. And the reason why, every other set piece he came out for, he helped deal with. I highlighted it in my... Um, um, my predicted lineup before the game with the carrier when I was talking about him. I says, in this game, West Ham are going to just put the ball in the six-yard box and send their big guys after. And it's what they've done all night. And I said, the carrier outside of that probably won't have too much to do, but he's going to have to stay switched on for the set pieces and come for them routinely to help the back line. And the one he did not come for is the one that they scored from. And that's what disappoints me. And when you look at it, it felt like he was happy to hide behind Mick, Mick and Antonio. An opposition sticking a, sticking a player on Vicario to try and stop him from coming and putting that ball in the six-yard box is not something new we faced this season. Man City done it when they knocked us out of the FA Cup. Everything done it to gain points off us. Now West Ham as well. And there's been a few other teams. Vicario has to understand every single time, as soon as he sees a player coming on him, 
call someone in to help them, or simple, take two step back, move to the side, do the cha-cha slide for all I care, I don't care. Just move, and then make space for yourself to come and punch it. He just stood there behind Antonio's sort of sharp responsibility going, not my fault. Now, I love Vicario, but he needs to be a lot stronger from set pieces. Whatever happened to the good old keepers coming out and commanding their area, especially their six-yard box? If you don't command your six-yard box, what hope have you got? He needs to be stronger in that regard um, um, on that one, uh, Davy Hall. So big yourself up. And then when it comes to needing a top striker, look... I've been saying it since the summer. If you are going to sell Harry Kane, you need to replace him with quality, and we failed to do that. Uh, Donovan New Striker, good to see you. You're right, it was always going to be hard for it. Rain Man, great to see you in the house. Shem Tam says, hey, Jack and Dave, hope you're both well. I heard Levy made such a profit that um, he's going to invest in your channel. <laughs> Nowhere near it. Look, I think we actually made an overall loss of 80 million once you take everything into account. We've actually made a loss um, overall. And what's staggering to me is that Daniel Levy still took a bonus and stuff like that, even though we, uh, you know, we, we we made a loss overall. So that, for me, is where I'm more annoyed with the finances and stuff like that. Um, and look, it's interesting to see how much scope we have left to maybe re invest further into this team. There better not be any excuses made this summer. They better keep investing. But my £6 million a match day, that is a colossal amount. There's definitely no other Premier League team making that on a match day. That's a serious amount. Big up, Jason Bell. Good to see you in the house. Hopefully you're keeping well. Kate, great to see you as always. Hopefully you're keeping well. Uh, we also got King Hoddle. I don't profess to understand football finance, but it doesn't look like we are in the healthy financial position, I assumed. Not great news. Well, look, King Hoddle, I don't know if anyone remembers, but I did say, you know, over January... That could be the time for us to strike on the financial fair play and really take full advantage of it because it was such a dead market. In the summer, other teams, you know, might circumvent other ways around it. But also, you know, something like this, where you know, always had the potential to happen. So, you know, have we missed the boat on taking advantage of, of, of other teams' finances? You know, for me, January was probably the window. Uh, big up Lisa. Oh, big up Dave and chat. Why do you think Richie didn't get more time? I thought he would have been perfect for that game. Look, the only other thing I can think of is he didn't really play too much for Brazil on the international break. Didn't play anything at all. In fact, made a small cameo off the bench against Luton, small cameo off the bench here. How fit is he? You know, we've seen the interviews that he's come out with as well about the mental health. Is he in the right sort of frame of mind and that as well? It's really hard to know what's going on there. But for me, he was the obvious answer last night. Ball's coming into the box, flying across six-yard area. A, a guy with a natural striker's instinct sits on the shoulder of the last defender expecting them to come across. Where was Sun for the majority of them crosses? Sitting back off all the time. Every single time. A good striker sniffs out where the opportunity is going to come from. And I don't blame Sun because he's not a natural striker like many people are trying to make him out to be. He's been a left winger all his life and he still is a left winger. But Sun got frustrated last night, dropping deep, trying to get the ball and get turned and running at the opposition. It's playing with your back to goal as a striker is completely different to being a guy that's used to running at the opposition and stuff like that. Son is learning on the job. And last night, that came back to haunt us, unfortunately, um, um, Lisa, on that one. But look, uh, everyone by the end of the game was saying, you know, especially come 80 minutes, get Richarlison on. So for me, hopefully, you know, there's more calls for him to start against Nottingham Forest. Because if anyone remembers... Nottingham Forest will also play a deep back line. We know what Nuno's like with his setup and stuff like that. So if you play Sun down the middle, you're going to go missing. And Sun's our biggest impact player. So you need to draw him where he's going to have most impact on that game. And again, against Forest, it's going to be running at them. If fans plays him down the middle, the warning signs are there from last night. We also have Destiny S. Uh, big up the Irish, big up Destiny. Good to see you in the building. Brad Matthews as well. James, the power trooper. Hi, Dave. I'm feeling good for the rest of the season. Ben Decor looked great. Brennan looked awesome. We have top centre back with Van de Ven back. Saren Adoji are uh, the future of this team. Come on, you Spurs. And that's the team. There is a lot of good teams to build off. Um, for me, you get that forward line right. You. You know, some of these games where we've dropped points this season would probably tell a different story and uh, we'd probably be closer to the title race than what we are. So next over the summer, for me, it's overhauling that forward line with quality players. I think we've learned this season 
any ordinary Joe Soap will not do. For all the good games that Werner's had and people tell me he has, I can come back to you with games where he's had no impact. The problem is we've had too many players like that down the years. Outside of Kenneth's son, we've had too many players like that. Bergvine, Lucas, people like that who blow hot and cold. And when you play them, you don't know what you're going to get. And that's why there's so much controversy around them in the fan base, because one week they're brilliant, the next game they're absolutely useless. What we need is someone like Sonny who's on it nine times out of ten. Okay, some was piss poor last night, but the guy's turned up for the majority of this season. We need more, more players of his ilk. Someone like Harry Kane who we let go. Players of his ilk in this forward line. I keep telling people, scoring goals and creating chances is the hardest thing to do in football. You cannot get away with it with bang average players. You need players that are on it most weeks. Um, and I'd also argue, you know, in years gone by, if Kane didn't step up, Son stepped up. If Son didn't step up, Kane stepped up. Last night, Sonnen was crowded out. West Ham done their homework on him. But we didn't have the other players around to really step up and make that difference and get us over the lightning games. So quality does matter. And last night and other games gone by has been an example of that. So this summer, sort it out and bring in genuine quality. Big up, uh, Robin Owen. Good to see you. John G, 1-1 one, one was a fair result. I said peace need improving. Absolutely atrocious in that part of the game. I mean, how many goals are we going to keep conceding from set pieces, John? It's becoming an absolute nightmare. Uh, DJ AK, big up, Dave. Come on, you Spurs. Good to see you. Alpes Patal, same old, same old, same way we played. Uh, Man United away. Paulio same, uh, said, same Dave. Richie should have played through the middle. Absolutely should have played through the middle. DYT2 uh, says, yeah, Millie Yelenak is doing defensive set pieces, but to be honest, we need assistant with offensive set pieces too. I, I read something a while ago, and I think I've seen Mason taking credit for it a while ago about him doing the defensive set pieces. Um, so interesting. Spin Master says, I still comfort myself that this is Ange's first season and we got a summer transfer window. That will be Ange ins and outs. Keep the belief this is uh, this as it is, is a build-up. Come on, you Spurs. Look, I've just been telling us that all season, you know, in the press conferences. There was one a month ago where he said, there's a lot of work still to do all over the pitch, you know. Um, and for me, I, I believe him, you know. Jurgen Klopp, his first season at Liverpool, there was ups and downs, but the more players that he got in to suit his system, the better it got. Same with Guardiola when he first walked into City. Same with Arteta when he first walked into Arsenal. You know, look at him out players he got rid of there and brought in players to more suit his system and the way he plays. This season, there was always going to be ups and downs. It was always going to happen. Um, and look, I'd argue it's a far outseeding my expectations to what I had at the start of the season. I get the frustration, but one thing I will say is, Rather than start a new project where you bring in a new manager and you have to, you know, readjust the squad, everything yet again, completely to his liking and start all over again. We know the problem areas heading into this summer. We know the areas that need to be addressed. And for me, look, we, people can put all the pressure they want on Lance Postacoglu. I have a feeling the club are going to back him and put, bring him into next season, regardless of what the fans' opinions are. But there is a lot of positives to build off. You know, I think when you look back over the course of the season, defensively, OK, there was a period there where it hasn't been right. But when Van de Ven and Romero have been together and, you know, not fresh off the back of injury, they've looked absolutely solid. The same with Adoji and Porro. Midfield, it looked really good with Bentecourt in there last night. Madison and Bastuma. Um, I would like Madison to step up a lot more. But for me, the biggest problem is we've dominated a lot of possession so far this season. A lot of people's frustration has been in the final third. Do we create enough? Do we take enough of our chances and stuff like that? And that's where the genuine improvement needs to happen. I think you improve that. I think you're talking about a complete different Tottenham team next season. You know, I, I'd go as far as saying if you had Harry Kane in this team this season, you'd probably be in a title challenge. Um, I reckon. And that, for me, highlights that. If you just bring in a bit more quality to this forward line, that will be the real difference maker. Of course, we need other things like a backup left-back, probably another you know, creative player to put a, bit, put a bit of pressure on Madison. The main money has to be spent in that forward area. It has to be. For me, that's the big difference between us catching the rest of the teams above us. Who else have we got here? We've got um, Stackademics. I'm worried the summer signings will be underwhelming. Look, I'm not going to worry about anything until I see them. I'm not going to sit here and do hypotheticals and stuff like that. I'll judge them as they come in, um, to be fair on that one. Big up, Rain Man, Trailblazer, Dave. When everyone was saying Sonny has to play century, you were saying Sonny's world class, but we need a proper number nine. Now everyone else is uh, swinging behind that truth. I'm not going to say any more on it. 
not going to say any more on it because I take no joy in it, to be brutally honest. You know, it pisses me off. I just don't want to be in this position. It's happened, and I just want us to bring in better quality forward players now, you know, going forward on that one, Rain Man. Nitro, DJ says, big up, Dave. Well done on 14K. Appreciate that. Al Ben, as good, always, as always good to see you. Title challenge back, five good midfielders. Uh, back five, good midfield. We need a serious uh, investment in goal scores. Absolutely spot on. DJ Samuel, great as always to see you, sir. How are you keeping? Peter Simmons, two players to sign. Isaac and Bowen, that'll start the front line. Bowen homegrown, but um, we ain't getting him out of West Ham for any sort of respectable money. We can forget about that for sure. Um, absolutely for sure. Big up, Bob Bean Counter. Hopefully you're keeping well. Uh, good to see you in the building. We also have Simon Clark as well. Paquetta would suit our team. Do you know who I was very impressed with last night? Kudos. That guy just does not lose the ball at all. There's time three, four, four Spurs players are laying tackles in on him. He's still coming out with the ball. He was absolutely fantastic yesterday. James Richmond, give some um, damn time. Uh, keep hands in charge. Sign up best players we possibly can. Come on, you Spurs. Absolutely spot on. Uh, big yourself up. Um, and DJ says, oh, good, Dave. Hope you're well today. Do you know what? I'm good. I'm okay, my man. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit tired. Quick turnaround between games and, you know, long hours doing the content, putting it all together and stuff like that. It's a lot easier when you win games as well. I would say that, DJ. But look, we're here. It's uh, end of me now. Let's find out what the fans have to say. And the first guest we have in the back end is the one and only Brad Matthews. Brad, how are you keeping, sir? All right, good, thank you very much. Had a nice, enjoyable Easter, including the win against Luton. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm good, thanks. I'm not what uh, Easter egg did you buy yourself. Uh, I didn't. No, I ate plenty of chocolate and drank plenty of beer, but I didn't actually have any Easter eggs, which is a bit bit weird. Well, I was so used to where I used to work; they used to give them to us for free every every Easter. So uh, that doesn't happen this time. So. You should have got yourself a beer flavored Easter egg or something like that, Brad. You know, combine well, the two. Can you imagine? Look, oh, look, you know what? What? What do you make of the game last night, Brad? I mean, there's a lot of overreaction, in my opinion. Yeah. There's some people that are saying, like me, overreaction. Some people are saying it's absolutely useless again. And coming into question and all, where do you think it maybe went wrong for us? Why didn't we get the three points? Last yeah, night? I, I I I agree with what you said earlier. Uh, I mean, I was seeing people last night saying, uh, you know, oh, Ange isn't isn't good enough for us. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, we've we've won two trophies in 31 years. What gives us the right to say who who isn't who isn't good enough for us? Mm. And I, I, I yeah, I think the last night, yeah, we we definitely lack a striker. Uh, and the way I look at it, I look at that team, our first level, I thought, well, if you put Kane in that team, like I think he's just said earlier, and also you put someone like Dembele as your number mm. six, you know, those two players, that, you know, that's just two players that make such a difference. Mm. So I think, yeah, we need that striker. We need to get Sonny away from that central striker. Mm. I think last night we started very, very well, but then I think we allowed, I think allowing West Ham to score, and we all know that our defending at set pieces isn't that good, and I, I was hiding behind the sofa you know, every time they got a corner, to be honest. But, yeah, mm. so I think that let them back into the game. That gave them more confidence. And they grew into the game. And in the end, you could probably argue that a, a draw was a fair result. But I think up until then, I think we were looking pretty pretty, pretty calm, pretty smart. Mm. Uh, I thought Werner, who had, I thought had a good game against Luton, he started off brilliantly. The first four minutes, providing that cross for the goal, and then he suddenly he disappeared. And when all, and as you were saying, when those crosses are coming in from from uh, from uh, Brennan Johnson, he wasn't making an effort to get to them, and that's what you yeah. need to happen. And you put a striker in there, or yeah, you know, anyone doesn't have to be Harry Kane, but any decent striker, and you're going to get more goals, you know, than we have been getting. So yeah, that was a problem. I think Brad, we let need... me ask you just quickly before you move on to your next point. The majority of fans were calling out for Richardson to be subbed on last night. Well, mm. Ange left it until the 82nd minute to bring him on. Why do you think Ange brought Richardson in only for the last 10 minutes instead of a lot earlier when it was clear and obvious that it needed to be done? Yeah, I, 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 I honestly don't know. I, I thought that was... Uh, I didn't agree with the, the uh, substitution of Madison. Mm. Uh, I, I can see why Ben McCall came off because he had the yellow card. I thought that was okay. And I can see, you know, I, I thought Madison was actually having a good game. So that that surprised me. Kulachewski didn't really work in that position. Uh, mm. I would possibly, I would have brought on, as you say, I would have brought on Ricarlison and taken Werner off. And then you can, and then you push Son out to that left. So that, you know, that would have been, what, with 20 minutes to go. So mm. I, I honestly don't know. Uh, look, I, I believe in Ange Postacoglu. I think, you know, he gets a lot of flack from supports, which he shouldn't. But it's okay to criticise him. And I think... Mm. 
you know, I will criticise him on, on, on that particular aspect. I did think he brought him on a little bit too late. The the one point I was going to make is that we seem to have lost that mentality for shots outside the box. Yeah. We don't seem to do it anymore. And we Is have that instructions, to... uh, Brad? Sorry? Is that instructions, uh, you know, uh, for fans maybe not to panic and stuff like that, you know, because when you do shoot and stuff, mm-hmm. you do run the risk of giving the opposition the ball back and stuff like that. I think, I think, I'm sure he does preach calmness because I mean, he virtually said that mm. when asked about why do we score so many late last minute goals? It's because they just keep doing what they need to do. They don't, they don't panic. Mm. As it comes to having a shot outside the goal, well, you're, you know, you're, you're in their box virtually. So if you do lose the ball, you know, you've got time to recover. Whereas if you're passing it around and you lose the ball, then, then you're, 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 you're going to get the counter attack, aren't you? So mm. if you have a shot, it goes wide. Then you've got the goal kick, so you, you start defending. But I think we used to have that with people like Kane, uh, people like Ericsson, uh, even going back to Jermaine Defoe, used to shoot from outside the box. Even Sonny used to do it. We don't send it from Sonny anymore. Mm. You know, he used to get that. And he, Sonny's two-footed, so he can do it on his right foot curling in or his left foot curling. We don't, we don't seem to see that anymore at the moment. So mm. I think that is a very big thing that we need to address. And you know you've got to you know you got to you got to take a chance, haven't you? Every now and again, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and, uh, I, I can't think of Poro against Burnley in the cup. I can't think of a, a, a goal we scored from a long shot. Where yeah. we, well, we used to get them all all the time. So yeah, yeah that, that's a. Do you think we're one-two dynamic there? Do you know one-two? Uh, what was it? What's the word? What two one-dimensional when we're going forward? Because everyone knows what we look to do: get fast, mm. wing, direct, run at their full back, skin them, put the ball across the six-yard box. You know. It, you know, it's yeah. the repeat. Are we one too dynamic? In yeah. That? You know what? You know. You know, Dave. I was thinking that over the weekend. I'm thinking everyone's going on about you know. Oh, that's that's the Ange Postecoglou goal, getting it wide, low cross, put it in. And I love that. Yeah, great. It works. But I was thinking, so you know, we're going to get sussed out. They're going to, you know, people are going to defend against that. So we need to, you know, you know we need to have another way of scoring. And again, mm-hmm. shots from outside the box. I mean, we can't put put balls in for headers, because we haven't got anyone a centre forward exactly. to do it. Exactly. Uh, we do tend to try and walk in at times. Uh, you know, it's just that one touch. But again, these are all things, you know, I, I think you made the point. I was about to say, there's a lot of people on, on social media that obviously don't listen to the press conferences because mm. he's been saying that all season. Now I'm just saying we're just getting it together this season. And I personally, I, I oh, yeah, look, I don't like losing. Don't get me wrong. I love winning. Mm. But, I'm I'm not really that bothered about this season. Losing in the cups, yeah, that that really got me down because I thought in the cup you can you know there's a possibility to win win a cup you know if you get mm. a decent run and you get a bit of luck. Uh, but I think as far as the league uh, is concerned, I'm not that worried. Yes, okay, if you get Champions League football, you can attract supposedly attract the better players, and also it means more money coming in that sort of thing. But I don't think it's the end of the world if if we don't don't achieve. Fourth this season, and I think Poster Coglu himself has said in press conferences, "No, he's, he's not talking about where we're going to end up. It's next season, the season after, where we, you know." And we had that under Potocino. The actual getting into the Champions League was that was just part part of the course. Mm. We didn't yeah. even for a few, two three seasons we didn't even worry about getting in Champions League. We going mm. for the title, the last season, the Chelsea season. Mm. We didn't worry about the Champions League. Yeah. We were already in it, you know. Yeah. So I think you know I, I do like that that mentality, and I, I think if we if we can give him a bit of help, you know, back him in the summer. He obviously knows what he wants. Mm. I still think we need a couple of match-winning players. I still think we need quality over the, rather than quantity. What areas um, are there match-winning players that you think we need them in, Brad? I think a, a centre-forward, definitely a striker. We definitely need a match-winning striker. I think, uh, I, when I say match-winning, I mean I mean quality player. I think we need a, mm. a quality number six. I've been disappointed with Basuma this season. I know he had a good start. Although Postacoglu actually thought, you know, said he had a good game last night. I thought um, he, I thought he actually yeah. had an all right game last yeah, night. It was it, one of his better performances. But again, it's one of his better performances. Goal. Yeah, one of his better performances. But I think, I think we need a little bit of competition in that area. So I think a, a decent player there, mm. and I think we need, we need someone another another creative midfielder as well. Uh, mm. You know, because Madison can't do it by himself, and also if Madison gets injured, you know, it, 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 you have that situation. So I mean, yeah. you know, I think three top quality players. Uh, and yes, you can add to the squad. You can get the decent players to add to the squad, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, that's what we need. Mm. I'm not sure it's going to happen. To be honest, I'm not sure that's what's going to happen. 
But I think if if uh, if we get that sort of backing in the summer, uh, who knows? But uh, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about it either. There's a lot of people getting already predicting what's going to happen in the summer in the summer transfer window. Mm. Uh, well, okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I know I know what what they're getting at because it happens every summer. But hey, why should we? You know, let's not get too stressed out about it at the moment. And I don't think the uh, reported losses uh, today really helped. You know, p- you well, know, people's uh, optimism heading into the summer on that. Brad, I, I mean, you know what's what? your thoughts I, on the finances? I don't know. I read, I read that. I, I actually that's <laughs> on my lunchtime. I actually, right, I'm going for lunch now. I'm going to read the THFC financial report. Uh, I need to look at all the. I, I, as I understand it, the profit and the loss parts of that report are separate. So the the profit had gone up from last season, and the loss has gone up from last season. But the losses have gone up from more a little bit more than the profits had. So mm-hmm. whether that means overall it's a loss, I don't know. But I think we've made eighty million loss overall. I think. Yeah, but I think yeah. you're fine. I think you're you're fine that a lot of teams will do that. I mean, that's how how, how finance works. Uh, the fact that we've got half a million or half a billion mm. income stream, that's got to be good. So I think that, that you know, uh, I was a bit spotted in the in the chairman's report. He mentioned the football team is important, but he didn't say it an awful lot, did he? He just mentioned, uh, you know, oh, by the way, the football's important. You know, I mean, I, look, I understand them getting all excited and being proud of what they've achieved in the community and all that sort of stuff. Totally agree with that. I understand being proud about that. But I just think there should be a little bit more attention, certainly in the reports, about about the actual football side. The thing that interested me was that the Madison and the Cario signings are part of that that financial report. Mm. But the Kane the Kane selling isn't. So Kane's 93 million, 100 million. That's not part of those those finances. So you've got Kane's uh, 93 million, then you've got the outlay to Brendan Johnson 45 million and I think uh, Van der Ven as well. So that that sort of evens out a bit. But with that sort of income, you know, I, we, we it, now is the time I I I'd be interested to see someone like Sean uh, talk about it. You know, he knows a, a lot more about finances than, than I do. Uh, so that'd be interesting to see what people say about that. Uh, but yeah, it's having half having half a billion income stream. That's, that's got to be good. You Let know? me ask you on that, Brad, because look, that's absolutely phenomenal, mm. right? You, you, when you break it down, it's absolutely phenomenal. But despite all the different revenue sources that we have coming in, right? It's still not enough to turn over, you know, a profit when you maximize your expenditures and your outgoings and stuff like that. Now, I know the club maybe, you know, haven't as been open to investment in years gone by. Do you think now maybe they're getting resigned if they do want to keep this self sustainable model? They might actually have to be open to investment, especially if they want to go again this summer in terms of have a really big summer under Ange Postacoglu and maybe bring in some of that quality in the forward line that we maybe so crave. They might have to take uh, you know, um, in- investment now. Do you think they they, they will open their doors? Their, their well, this, this, is the, this is the first time that Daniel Levy has actually admitted that they're looking at getting some more investment, investment in. So I get the impression from that is that they've, they've the first – you know, since the stadium opened, the first three or four years, okay, you had COVID, which, you know, put a little bit of a delay on it. I think they, they've been getting to that situation where we're financially sustainable, uh, you know, and then, they, they, as I read it, now maybe they're moving on to the, now we get the investment in, we still haven't got naming rights. Uh, so there's there are other income streams that we're looking at. I just hope, I just hope it goes into the team. And, and we, we give... We give Postacoglu the budget that he he wants, or a budget, and leave it up to him how he spends it. Because I don't like this. I, I, my one huge criticism of Daniel Levy and, and Enoch has always been that the players we could have had, but we've reneged on three or four million pounds. And as those figures show, we make that in bloody match day it receipts. Mm. So that's the only thing. That's the one thing I really. Uh, we've always got to that position with 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 Levy and Enoch. We got it to Postacoglu. When we get to the position, and I can see it happening with Postacoglu, and then just to go that extra mile to to to, to get your championships and that sort of thing, we don't seem to do it. We don't seem to yeah. show that 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 uh, just be brave. You yeah. know, financial stability is great. Don't get me wrong. We're in a lot better position than a lot of other clubs. I'll be interested to see what what, you know, Man City and Chelsea and all these Liverpool's financial figures are, yeah. you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I just hope that they, they do. But as I say, we've got to wait until the summer. Yeah. Uh, at least we know that 
uh, certainly from what Postacoglu says, the signings are his signings. They're not sort of this one's for the club sort of thing. Mm. Get those. And we've got a few players that we need to get rid of as well. Uh, I mean, how many more seasons do you give players like Celso? Brian Hill, I mean, doesn't even make the bench now. Yeah. You know, we, we've got to we've got to bite the bullet. Uh, the thing that worries me is we might be just waiting for their contracts to run out before we get rid of them. You know, that's why we keep loaning them out to teams. Well, is that not a huge problem? A headache. And then Bella coming back. Oh, my uh, word. This summer, you well, know, 200 odd grand a week. We bought him in 2020. Was he on a six year contract? Yeah. So, yeah, so we might have. I yeah. think when he returns, he's got one year left, which is yeah. yeah. so not too bad in that regard. <laughs> Brad, look, you know, to what you said, we do need a big summer this, this summer. You know, we need to. Sign in the right places. Um, it'd be interesting, you know. I think I've seen a report today that Tottenham will have to maybe look to sell on the likes of Emerson to refund reinvesting into that squad, which you might believe off the back of Tottenham's finances coming out today. Um, so that investment might happen quicker than what we think. Well, but let's let's I, I, wait and I, see on that regard. I wouldn't be so I wouldn't be so upset about the finance figure. I think we need to to certainly myself need to just see someone who knows a bit about them to, to come out and mm. say. Whether they're good, whether they're bad, blah blah blah. There's blah, a guy here on Maguire. Actually, he does a podcast where he's it's specifically on football finances, and he's very good. And yeah. um, I'll have a look tonight to see if he's done one on the Tottenham yeah. finances yeah. and uh, send it on to listen. But like you, I'm also waiting to hear Shawnee speak on it. But look, Brad, great, great appearance as always. Appreciate you coming on and getting us kicked off. Man, it's not the easiest uh, thing to do. Uh, <laughs> but what's going on at Blue Sofa Songs? Yeah, Blue Sofa Songs, the, uh, my YouTube channel that uh, I write and uh, record and uh, my own songs, all the music, all the lyrics are mine, if you don't already know. Uh, please go over there, please view some of the songs. The last song I put on there, which I think is a fairly decent song, has really bombed. It's it's literally had 24 views. And to give you an idea, the last two songs have had over 100. So, so yeah, uh, I'm 191 subscribers, so trying to get to that magic 200. Uh, but uh, yeah, Blue Stuff for Songs. There's a song out there at the moment called uh, uh, What's it called? Uh, Signs of Summer, which is a, uh, a, a song about hope, basically. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, yeah, but yeah, check it out. Give me the like, share with your friends, comment, all those sorts of, sorts of nice things. Again, subscribe to this guy and anyone else that have got channels on there. We're all in this together. We all help yeah. each other out. More it's terrible. We're all one big therapy group, Brad. We are indeed, indeed we are, indeed we are, and uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. So please check out my channel, and uh, just just think of the songs as just think of them as potential, what they could potentially have. I'm in a song competition, uh, and the, my songs on there as well. Uh, but I found out today that there are five thousand entries in this song competition. So, so yeah, it's a, a bit of a long shot, but the song's decent. So who knows? Who yeah. knows? <laughs> well, look, you never know, Brad. You know, uh, you, you know, I would say five thousand. It is a big competition to compete with. But even if you end inside the top hundred, take 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 confidence from that. Is what I would oh, say. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, Please love that. Get over, check out Brad's channel. He's a Spurs fan with a dream. Can't knock that. So get over there, smash that subscribe button, and give Brad all your support. Brad, thank you very much for your time this evening, and, Dave, Dave. Up. and I'm sure we'll speak again soon. I'm, I'm off to watch the City go now. Come on, City. I'm gonna, Enjoy. I'm gonna come come on. And man for the next three man. hours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon, come buddy. On, Trust in Ange Postacoglu. Celebrate everything. <laughs> love it, love it. Have a good evening. Keep me updated on the uh, City game, will you? I will. I will. Cheers, Dave. Right. Take care, mate. Bye-bye. Have a good one, Brad. Have a good one. That's Brad, everybody. Big him up in the comment section. What an absolute gentleman. We've got this in here from Al Ben. Actually, just quickly, guys, everyone do get over and support Brad on his channel. Really nice guy, and he's a guy with a dream. So get over there and help that happen. We've got Al Ben here. He says, I've seen signs that we we are working on breaking down low block with intricate passing. May look like overpassing, but this will take time to master. 100%. But I think what my biggest frustration is with that, Al Ben, is it looks good and it looks pretty, but a lot of it was down the middle. Well, we already knew coming into the game, the space was going to be blocked up by West Ham. Do that down the sides. Do it down the right-hand side of the box, the left-hand side of the box. You know, why did we stop getting the ball out to Werner, you know, when he was absolutely murdering uh, Kufal for large periods? We stopped putting the ball out there and started this intricate stuff down the middle when we were 1-0 up. 
you know, and for me, it's clear that, you know, Son and Madison, you know, they, they got love for each other and want to do that. But it's not helping the team. That's more, I look at that as more selfish for their own egos, to be brutally honest, than actually what's best for the, for the team. You know, trying to play these intricate passes down the middle against West Ham is the complete wrong way to go about it. Johnson murdered them down the right-hand side, getting on the outside, putting balls in the box. And Werner did when, when we were giving him the ball in space to run out Kufan and stuff like that. Why we changed it up to play down the heart of West Ham when they traditionally blocked that up against Tottenham. They've done it in pre-season, they've done it in the first game, and they've done it last night. Is absolutely mind-boggling. And I actually question some of the intelligence of some of these players in terms of game management and stuff like that. When you're 1-0 up and you've already got a guy that's murdering his opponent and you know where the space is, you keep hammering that. Keep hammering it until they draw players out there to stop it. And then you can start doing your intricate stuff down the middle. But, you know, I think we went for it way too soon in that regard, Al Ben. But I do understand what you're taking. It will take time. You know, a lot of these players with the link up playing intricate stuff like that. It will take time to yield great effect and stuff like that. But now's not the time. Now every point matters. Get points on the board against low block teams. I'm sick of saying it. It was the same under Conte. Stop trying to go through the middle and go down on the out outside. The reason why we struggle to go down on the outside is because we don't have the consistent quality. But also, we didn't have a striker in the box last night either. Some was supposed to be there. We spent most of the time sitting on the edge of the box or coming away from that central position and stuff like that. So that didn't help. But I do understand what you're saying and over time, work on it. But for me, I just think it was so silly last night. When, when West Ham, we know they block up the middle. But look, let's bring on the next guest. Let's bring on the Tron, the Prophet Tron, Derma Tron. And let's hear what he has to say on this point. Big up, Derma. How are you keeping? Are oh, you changed the picture from the start of the show to now? How are you keeping? Yeah, I just wanted a bit of Ange behind me just to show in Ange we trust and how much I trust this man and how much this man will deliver us to the promised land. You know, he's got his kangaroo. He rode in from Australia and he's going to take Tottenham all the ways. Him and his kangaroo. Him and Skippy. So go well, on, we'll Skippy. Get, on get the Premier League. In the minute, Dermo, because I have a few yeah. criticisms of yesterday and it's one of the, some of the first criticisms mm. I've had of this season. But let's start with that, Ben here. You know, he's saying that, you know, he is seeing progress on us being able to break down these low block teams yeah. with the intricate passing. Um, do you agree with him here? Um, yeah, I do see improvements. We're not there yet. There is a lot to improve on, but we're getting there. We're, we're getting there, and I think, I think it's, I think it's very difficult going away, especially to West Ham, especially to these away games where teams will sit back and will just put a twelve men behind the ball. Can I just give you one stat on this, Dave? The okay. last time we won at the London Stadium was Mourinho's first game, yeah, and that three-two win. We have not won there since. I think it works out to be, if I'm right, uh, let me get it right, um, three defeats and one draw, I think, three defeats or two draws. So it's never an easy place to go to. And West Ham will sit there. We are struggling. But I agree with Alvin. I'm seeing, I'm seeing improvement. It mm. is getting there. And you get the right players into the right position, into the right areas, we will, we will, we will, com we will compture that. So, mm. look. Improvements, that's all I want to see. Improvements. Big up, Al Ben, my man. Really appreciate the support on that. Maybe me and Dermot have slightly different opinions, so let me know, uh, you know, who's you agree with. Big up, Al Ben, on that, brother. Really do appreciate the support, my man. But Dermot, coming into Ange Postacoglu, mm. look, I'm one of them before I go and say this. You know, I'm fully behind Ange. I have been yeah. from the very beginning, and I believe he's going to be the right man heading into mm. next season. Um, I think, you know, with, with a couple more transfers and stuff like that. Mm. However, I think last night he got it wrong on so many levels. Mm. I think he got it wrong from the start with his team selection in terms of playing Sonny through the middle. I also think he got it wrong. Okay, you, I, I understand you can get it wrong, but then make mm. amends to it. And he left it way too late to bring on Richarlison when the game was begging out when Brandon Johnson was whipping mm. balls in for that natural striker mm. to be there, you know, that fox in the box, you know, the guy who knows where to hunt out the chance and stuff like that. And he left it way too late. So I do mm. have criticisms, you know, in that regard on terms of team selection in the front line, but also how left he, how long he left to change it as well. Yeah. Look, I, I, I sort of, we talked about it earlier today, Dave. We, you ranked, you know, and we talked about it a bit. I do understand where you're coming from. And there is frustration there that maybe he's making too many rookie Premier League mistakes and maybe he's not adjusting to the Premier League and 
it, he will get there. He's going to make these mistakes. He's going to make these cock-ups and he will learn from them. And I, I think, I, I think with Ange last night, he's trying his best. Look, I said it yesterday, put Richie down the middle. Now I did say drop son, which caused a little bit of trouble in the, in the chat. And I stand by that. You either drop him or put him on the wing, but you put Sonny, you put, Richie mm. down the middle because he's a striker that can go up against defenders, hold up the ball, and bring other players into into you. Mm. And Ange, I think, didn't see that, and he was either too late when he saw it. So mm. I think he's making mistakes, but let, let's give him a chance. Let, let let him learn from the mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Ange is not perfect. He's got an awful lot right more than he's got a lot wrong. And I do feel mm. when he does make mistakes, or we do lose or draw. People are very quick to jump on the Ange Postecoglou. He's not good enough. He's only a manager from Scotland. Do you know what does he know about the Premier League? But when he does stuff well and we win, where's everyone then? Doors shouting his name. Or do you know the things are shouting from the rooftops and Postecoglou? Do you know it's the greatest manager since Bill Nick? Mm. So you, you can have it both ways. He's going to make mistakes, and we've got to let him learn by them mistakes, and then we'll see how it goes next season. And well, that's my view on it. Look, I, I agree with you. For me, you know, he, he's made a couple of mistakes, and I think he'll learn from that next season. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't believe a change in manager, and that is the right direction for Tottenham Hotspur. Hmm. I think we already know the sort of areas where we need improvement rather than going hmm. a different direction altogether and different players suit different manager systems and all that jazz. But Bob Bean Counter says maybe to bring a bit of sort of devil's advocate mm. to it. Um, he says, I not like that the no work, but we have gone backwards since the first 10 games. And I mean, you know, it's probably a fair argument to make. What would you say to that? Um, lovely punt there for Shawnee Show, by the way. So that's very good plugging, by the way. Can I just say, well done, you. Um, very clever. Um, secondly, um, no disrespect to you, Bob Bean Counter. I, I love your comments when you come in. But I've got two words for that. Bullshit. Why? Uh, we have not gone backwards since the first 10 games. We, when we're you look improving. at results, oh, Darmo, yeah, we don't you, have the consistency we had yeah, over the first hang 10 on. games. There's up we're, and back, downs. we're better off than we were last season. We're, mm. we're, but everyone expected us to be in the mid-table or relegation. We're now fighting for Champions League. We've scored more goals than we did last season. I think four more, if I'm obs if I'm right. Without Harry Kane, okay, defensively, we 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 could do with you know better defensively. I'll admit that, but we're coming back from twenty two points from losing positions this season. We've got the fight. We have the desire. No, we're not going to win every game, but we're not. We're not gone backwards. This is what I get with fans. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, but come on, you know. Where we were last season in the depths of depression under Conte, going nowhere, going absolute nowhere. One, me and Philip, we went to the AC Milan, Dave, and you know as well as I do, we left that. Oh, it's disillusioned. Disillusioned to the point where me and Philip are even saying, I want, don't want to know Spurs this, that seat for the rest of that season. And she's come in, we're going to have bad games, we're going to have good games. Was it all perfect when Poch first took over? No, there was times we said we went backwards on the potch. Mm. So it's it's going to get there. But I think you've got to look at it a little bit more logically than just saying, oh, we've gone backwards because you don't agree with the owner or you don't agree with the manager. I think it's out of BS. I really do. And I feel really strongly on that. No, fair enough. Look, you're entitled to your opinion, just mm. like Bob Bean Counter is. Yeah, but... and respect to his opinion as well. But I don't mean any offence when I said it was bullshit. But I was no, but look, to... these, are, these are discussions that need to happen. Yeah. You know, people mm. with polar opposites of opinions and stuff yeah. like that. Look, I tend to lean on your side of things. I've seen enough for me, you know, to know that I think going into next season, mm. you put all the other pieces in place. I think yeah. we will have a good, solid sort of mm. consistent campaign next season. But... I do understand the argument, you know, are yeah. we are we sort of regressing when you look at it, the amount of injuries that we've had, players off on international duty, suspensions and stuff. I do think we have regressed and we're struggling mm -hmm. to get it back. But we've regressed because 
of, of all of that, you know, and when we've had to rely on some of the squad players and all, they're just not good enough. It takes a downturn. And then when people come back, their motivation and their hunger that they once had at the start of the season has completely changed because yeah. they're now coming into a situation where they're trying to salvage it rather than where they left it in the first place. So there's a lot of sort of contributing factors yeah. on why maybe it's regressed a little. Mm. But I don't think it's enough for me to say, tear up the script, get him gone, you know, the system doesn't work, stuff like that. I think, you yeah. know, for me, you bring in a striker, solves a lot of Tottenham's yeah. problems over the course of the campaign, you know, and a good striker as well. Not just a guy that scores goals, but a mm. guy that can play with his back to the goal, you know, hold it up, bring others mm. into play, get churned, spray passes around and stuff like that. You know, bring in a, another creative midfielder to compete with Madison. He's always mm. going to get injuries every single season, you know, so that when he is out injured, we don't feel the pinch of it and stuff yeah. like like that so for me i see enough i'm completely with you on that regard um Dermo, I've, I've got a bag of questions here so let me yeah. pull another one out of there out of the bag for you what were your thoughts on the combination of the midfield trio yesterday in terms of presuma bentecourt and madison how do you think it worked and uh, uh is it something you would look to uh put out again against the forest it, it, it wasn't the midfield three i was going with and you know that i picked a completely different here, yeah. i i put sarah had the presumer by the way but it worked and it did work. And I was impressed with Basuma last night. He, When Basuma's at his best, you don't notice him. That's, that's when Basuma is at his best, when you don't notice him. That's when he's at his most, you know, effectiveness. Mm. Um, I thought he had a good game last night. I thought Bentacore played well. And I thought Madison did have a good game. I think why Ange took him off was... We've got another game on on Saturday, on Sunday against Forest. Mm. Maybe take them off. We've got a point. Maybe we can take that. So maybe there was that reason and why taking them off. I didn't agree with it, but I probably see the, the principles why he did it. So there was probably a logical reason why. And also, Dave, he has been struggling with his ankles the last few weeks as well. He's so I think there's a little uh, niggle there. You know what? But like, no, hang on, hang on. Let I, me I, finish. I, I just want to say something. I just want to say something quickly on that. I hear this a lot when it comes to Madison, right? And I get it. But no football. If anyone thinks that a footballer is going out there 100% every single game, you're completely mistaken. They don't. They all go out there with nicks mm. and pains and stuff like that. But the strong ones don't let it affect their games because mentally they can get on with it. They can take pain and stuff like that. For me, when it comes to Madison, you know, I mean, he, you know, he's he's been back since January. I'm sorry. He need, he just need stop being made of glass and, and just do better. Yeah, look... The point I, that the point I was making was I think he was looking at that long with the game on Sunday. And I, I think Madison is a little bit injury prone as well. So you've got to be careful. He's supposed to be our creative midfielder. But he needs to do better. And I think mm -hmm. I would have started last night with on Saturday on Sunday with Basuma, Bentoncourt, and Saar. Interesting. I, I, I would start with that tree. Because we need to change something up front for the Forest game. We can't keep going with the same four or five or four all the time. Something's mm. not working. So mix it up a little bit. Mm. You're paid, a manager is paid to manage. Big managers make big calls. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But I think he needs to make a big call against Forest. And these are the games where we can score bad. Um, we need to score for our goal difference against Villa as well. Mm. Because it, it's going to come down to goal difference at the end of the Good. season. So these are the games against Luton, against Forest, who are fighting for their lives. It's a chance to change it up a little bit. Put Sonny mm. in the wing. Put Kulu in the number 10 role. Put Richie up front. Put Johnson on the mm. other wing. Change it around a little bit. Mm. Because it isn't... And Madison is frustrating me because he's such a great player. I love Madison. I was delighted when he joined Tottenham. But he's frustrating me a little bit. And I don't think he's going to the Euros with England. On, could on the desk. Yeah, he could miss out. And for a selfish point of view, I hope he does. Because that'd be yeah. good for us. Give him a season, give him a summer rest, get him mm. back early for pre-season. Mm. A fit and quality James Madison, that, that, you saw what happened at the beginning of the season, how effective yeah. we were. Yeah. So look, we, it's been a long season. We're better when we thought we were going to be. I can see the fruits of Anxious Labour. And look, long may it continue and come on you Spurs because I know we will get there. We will so, get there. Let's keep, let's never stop and let's keep 
behind the manager. Because if we don't, if we let Ange go, we're in a whole lot of trouble. I'm telling you that now. I'm warning you that. We're going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble. Interesting. Well, Dharma sending out the warning shots there. And big up ball, big counter for getting the best out of Dharma there with your probing question, which I absolutely loved. As you can see, I had a grin on my face. It was brilliant to see. Uh, but guys, please get over and check out Dharma's channel. Dermo, I just need to speak to the missus one second. Plug your channel, my man. Yeah, if it, look, I'm only seven away from 1,800. I would love to get there tonight, guys. So seven off you. If you can seven you, if you just pop over, it costs you nothing to hit the subscribe button. Get old Dermatron up to 1,800 before the podcast tomorrow night with me, Dave, and the, and the man himself, Philip Brady, over there on THFC. Dave, we've got watch-alongs, pre-match, post-match. We've got the Cockle Clock podcast, and we also got the Unholy, Unholy Trinity podcast as well. The three most unholiest men in Ireland you are likely to see, and that's on tomorrow every Thursday at nine. But seven of you, it's not, doesn't, I don't ask for much. Dermatron never asks for anything. I'm asking seven of you, just get me up to 1,800. Then let me kick on. We're 200 away from 2K. Uh. Dave, I'm leaving it in your hands. I'm going to spend the night with, with Mrs. Tron and do all things the Trons do. I'm leaving it in your hands. Seven away. That's what I want to get there. Make Dermatron happy, Bonnie. We know a song Dermot's going to listen to. Do you know that song? Me and you, baby. You know that song? Ain't nothing but my I was, I was more thinking I think that's of the what other one. For the evening. I, was, I was more thinking of something healing, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but Dermot, whatever you're up to, I don't really want to know anyway. My mind focuses on Tottenham. You go and enjoy your evening. And I'll speak to you again soon. All right? Yeah, I'm having a, I Just very quickly, Dave. I uh, You said a quick turnaround. It is tiring. I'm having the night off tonight. God bless you for doing this tonight. But yeah. You know, we will get there. The summer's coming. Come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Have a good evening, Sean. Have you a good too. one, my man. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. 70 years, get over there. Smash the subscribe on Dharmic's channel. I let him hit the latest number. He's always on here. Has a good, a few good things to say. I really like the guy as well. And plus, I'm on his channel. So smash that subscribe button and alert you when I'm on there tomorrow evening. So make sure you get over and check that out. But look, we're going to keep it moving. Donovan, are you there, my man? He is. Let's get him on. Let's hear what he has to say. Big up, Donovan. How are you keeping this evening? Ah, oh, big up, lad. Just uh, making some some dinner and uh, gonna <clears throat> relax the uh, the game later. But then I got to practice later for soccer, so I'm excited for that. Nice, nice. Well, hopefully you have a good practice. Hopefully you're a bit more potent in the final third. There, uh, you know, when you go forward on set pieces, then maybe what we were last night, lad. But look, I mean, speaking of last night, where do you think, well, what went wrong for you last night? Did we just lack that killer instinct? Did we lack that guy in front of goal? I mean, did it go wrong further on back? Did Ange, did it go wrong from Ange's team selection? I mean, where did it go wrong for you? Well, you can tell we're in the middle of a project. Mm. And um, it's clear to see on all fronts that we don't have a, a proper coaching on set pieces, and especially defensive set pieces. Um, whether that's just because we're so early in the project and Ange is still assembling his coaching squad and he wants to know, he's want to give these guys a chance, you know, like it would be a big move coming in here first year and get around Ryan Mason when he's done so much over the club. Like he's been our, he's been the fall guy, but not for his own fault, right? Like, let me ask you on that, Donovan, because I actually what? see a lot made of that. You know, I think people mm -hmm. are getting fed up with how weak we are from set pieces and stuff like that. But Ange Postacoglu came in here and had a decision to keep Govo in here or not, and he did choose to let him go. Um, did he make a mistake there? You, hindsight's twenty twenty. You could say yes because we were scoring. We were the highest scoring team off set pieces last year, and we we defended quite well. Uh, actually, no, we never really could no, defend quite well against set pieces, <laughs> but we we were an attacking threat. But I could see from the outside point of view is that when you have a toxic locker room and you have a toxic coaching staff that like to victimize players and like, and, and, and pick out individuals. Um, maybe he just wanted a clean slate, you know, um, mm. just wanted to wipe the board clean, but you, you touch on those set pieces, Dave, why, like at any level of the game, you know, that you put a first man on the front post and the back post and you, and, and, and you see that goal that goes in, man, you have a person on that front post there, you're going to head it off the line or, or, or at least get trying to get his body in front of it. And also, you know that they're going to target Vicario, especially big teams like West Ham, teams yeah. that are like solid offset bases. So why, as soon as that ball's conceded, 
you need your three biggest men to get to that space just first, plant themselves in that space first and, and defend the keeper. Like as soon as that ball goes out, instead of complaining to the ref or like yelling at each other, get in, block that triangle, that six yard circle radius around Vicario and then build your defense from there. It's clear to see that no, there's no coaching and there's no um, accountability when it comes to defending these pieces. I think right now, I'm just kind of sorting it out and seeing what's, what's going on. They might have the occasional mm -hmm. pointer, like, um, you know, like a little bit of heads up here and there, but the level of coaching that we've seen before, and even these big clubs, like... Um, Donovan, uh, what? Let, let me ask you, right? Because, you know, there could be an argument made that there is actually coaching going on behind. But do our players have the want or the will to go and header that ball? Because that can be the case. You know, I've been in teams where you've been coached on set pieces and that, but for when the ball starts coming in in game situations and there's opposition running at you and he's a big guy, some people shirk that moment, you know, and don't want to get hurt and sort of shy away and pull out. Could that be the case? Because yeah. how, many goals, how many goals from set pieces have we conceded where the, the, the guy heading the ball is actually, it's been uncontested. Yeah, you do a half ass attempt where you kind of duck a little bit and you totally get overpowered. I hear what you're saying. That that also has to be like with our team selection too, right? We, just, we need us a bit more bollocks in the midfield. We need a bit more bollocks up front too. Players I don't mind taking a couple knocks here and there. Mm. Um, nothing against nothing against the guy, but I can name three or four efforts where our center forward who started last night has conceded set piece goals. And one to comes to mind against West Ham, you know, coming in with his back turned. Um yeah, we need a, we need the generals like Hoiberg's, right, and, and that team where um, I'm not calling for Hoiberg to start, but I'm calling for that mentality of a player who's going to give it their mm -hmm. all and be blood on the jersey. Um, uh, yeah, that, that could come down to it. But, you know, you don't need to be last-ditch defending if you defend properly and with, with a bit of tact, right? So yeah. I know it's a bit of both. Um, but then again, like I, like like um, Brad and Dermo were saying earlier, like it's our first season, right? Like I, I have such low expectations for this season. Um, but now that we've overachieved, um, as long as we don't get absolutely thrashed by Woolwich and mm -hmm. we, we finish in the top five, five or four, I mean, that's a good season for me. But we can't play like that against Arsenal because I don't want to even put it out there, but Arsenal are, are a team and, um, you know, we, we, we might be a starting 11, right? So we need to play our good football because uh, that's going to be a big game coming up here. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> On what you were saying there, look, I think I, I, th I think the majority of fans would probably, you know, are probably accepting that it's the first season and there is going to be inconsistencies, ups and downs. But Ange Postacoglu, and I have told I told everyone this from the beginning who thought the guy was here for a project. He's talking about winning trophies, you know, all season long. And he did say in the in the build up to this West Ham game, next season he wants to be in a title challenge. That's why he's here. He ain't here to sit here and get Champions League again next year and stuff. He wants to win things. I told everybody this when we first signed him. So what what changes do we need to make then to sort of eradicate the inconsistencies and become that consistent team like Arsenal have been over, you know, you know, this season in order to get ourselves into a title challenge? Because Arsenal went from from what was it eight into a title <clears throat> challenge, so you know it can't be done. So what 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 needs to happen? I never follow Marsh. I, I give them I give them Woolwich right where they belong. But um, seriously, man, like you have to take that squad and really do some open heart surgery to that squad, man. Like the likes of Sessignon, the likes of Tanganga, the likes of Skip, the likes of uh, Brian Hill. I don't. I have yet to make a decision on that uh, Israeli. Um, Solomon. Kind of, yeah. Um, you know, we have to make a decision on Lacelso. We have to make a decision on Hoiberg. Um, Davies too, and then maybe even Foster as a backup keeper. You know, you see Arsenal, and they got they were ruthless. They got rid of their big signing Pepe. They got rid of mm. Go ahead and Belly too. They got rid of the likes of Reese Nelson, right? And and in Ketty, mm. I don't think sits on the bench with them anymore. You know, they got rid of Xhaka, their decisive player. So we really have to go in and, and these these 13 to 22 string, like number 20, 13 to 22 players in our squad, you have to go and make players that can make an impact on the bench. Yeah. Arsenal need to change attack or dynamic at the end of the game. What do they do? They throw on uh, Troussard, right? They can bring they can bring the likes of uh, Jorginho off the bench to dictate play in the back, right? And when we already have... We're already way ahead of where we should, where Arsenal were for those three seasons, building the eight, where we, have that, solid, where we have that solid back four and the goalie solved. 
you know, mm-hmm. once we know we have the car, you have the two center back pairings and the full backs for the, the next five or 10 years. And you can build off of that, you know, mm-hmm. add Sonny into that, add Madison. But for the rest of the team, maybe bar Sar, I think it's open for, I think it's open for a debate or interpretation. We, I think, I think uh, Johnson's going to be a good impact sub off the bench uh, going forward for the next 18 months. Um, but yeah, we have, I, honestly, dude, I don't, I don't know anything about the financial state because uh, it just came out and I didn't get a chance to look at it. Mm. But uh, if we are in a position of financial power still, take advantage of that, you know, go out there and uh, make sure Ange gets the players he wants. But it all, it all comes down to alignment from the top right down to the bottom. Daniel Levy needs to align with Ange. Ange needs to be clear on the track, uh, targets he needs. Mm. And we have to do some serious work for that squad this summer. Mm. Do you know what, um, Donovan? Off, off, off the finance, it's, it's sort of, it's an interesting one to see where we go with it, right? Because we know the club want to be self-sustainable, right? They don't want to be making huge losses every single year. But the, it comes out today. Once you take away the, you know, all the money generated and all the stuff that we've had to pay out and stuff like that, I think we've made a loss of about eighty million sort of euros, um, or pounds, whatever the currency is. But we're still way under, still way nowhere near breaching financial fair play, and still way under the Premier League set of rules as well. So it'll be interesting to see whether the club, you know, use that scope that they're underneath now to flex their muscles and accept a, a few losses over the next couple of years and, and hopefully regain it back, you know, further on, or or whether they pull the reins in. Now, the third option is is talking about maybe investment. That seems to be put back on the table again now. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens there. I would hesitate that maybe they would look to get an investor in because we know they don't want to lose money. So what they might do is bring an investor in and use that money then maybe to go and sort of you know, bring a bit more oomph or say quad, they call it, you know, to that squad. Uh, that would be absolutely nice. Um, where do you stand on Sun being played down the middle? Is that an experiment that now has to be stopped to move out to the left and get Richie in down the middle? Or or would you still persist with Sun through the middle? Totally. Uh, can I just can I just touch on that that financial thing? That oh, work away. Yeah, 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 work away. So, uh, yeah, that makes sense because, like, I'm like, I'm no Sean Butler here. Like, I, I, I do not have a history in finances or anything. Everyone's waiting for him. He's, he's lighting up. Yeah, I know. I know. Next. Everyone's wanting to get his, I'm looking forward to work tomorrow so I can just plug it in and, and hear it. But, um, no, like, with any multi-tiered business, like, there's going to be uh, different sectors of the business, right? Like, there's going to be, in our entertainment business, there's going to be entertainment. And now, I guess, a combination and, and tourism because of that hotel that's being built. And then we have football as a separate entity. And I could totally see Daniel Levy you're looking for investment just in that football branch of the business and the entity. So he can still use that profit to build his hotels and still invest in the off the field stuff that brings in the money for the company. Cause it's not the club, it's Tottenham Hotspur company. And then yeah, bring in, bring in foreign investment or bring in, bring in some kind of shares, move stuff around. So we do get more money on the pitch, but you and I both know that. And we all know that and can work on a shoestring budget and still deliver. So um, regardless of what happens, I think we're in safe hands. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, sun through the middle. You know, it was so it was so awesome yesterday to see Brandon Jan Brandon Johnson like start develop the backbone. You know right? yesterday. Really, yeah, right. And he really took. And it gets a tough team too because you know, like uh, we've seen the likes of Mora and Bergvine just get bullied in the, those mm-hmm. games, right? Get get, the, get too close to the guy and just hit the turf. And their mm-hmm. white jerseys were brown by the end of the game. But Johnson really stood on it business and i can't count how many times Werner missed his back post tap in it's not to blame Werner, uh, just he played in that position he know? was driving me insane yesterday i know and he, the guy was playing so good too he had abs he had so fell on toast so it wasn't necessarily Werner's fault i think johnson just had such a good game that they wanted to play it play it through his side constantly where they mm-hmm. should have balanced the attack up more because then you know um Werner was skinning his man just as much as johnson was mm-hmm. but you're totally right about the uh the sun being absent through the middle. And even in parts where he did come low and he turned on the half turn, he had five or six yards of space to unleash a shot. We've seen him do in the past. I think he was just thinking too much. I think he was overthinking mm-hmm. too much. I think, um, uh, I think he needs a bit of, uh, to go back to the basics. I think he needs to do what he does best. Feed his man, whip in the shots, take on people with his weaker foot. And um, whether it's that the assumed responsibility with club and country this year, of captain, mm. maybe he's feeling his own body clock. He has know. played a lot of football, to be fair to the guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and you see pictures of him every every training session with career with his knee bandaged up right to the right to the right to the mm. tilt, right? But in this particular game, especially after the 60th minute, 
you know, get Richie in there. Richie's crazy. He's a psycho, man. He'll dive and dive and header mm -hmm. three feet off the ground within boots, man. He'll throw himself at the keeper. He doesn't care, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, that game was screaming out for a center forward uh, who who was aerially dominant. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something we have to go on the transfer market too. Like I don't mm -hmm. I don't have any faith in the likes of um, that Jimenez guy from Firenord. But we do need a player. Like I would, I would shout for Vlahovic, Vlahovic from Juventus. Yeah. That's who I'd like into the ball, big six four unit, something completely yeah. different than what we have. Yeah. Um, but uh, you, you said it yourself, dude. Once you, once we got rid of Harry Kane, like I mean, that that's a clear hole that that needs to be filled, right? So. Mm. And look, they're, they're filling it to a degree. And I do think, look, when you look at it, you know, people say, oh, you know, we scored nearly as many goals as we did last year. But last year is not a great barometer to go off. And neither are the last few years, by the way, because, you know, we were playing defensive systems, you know. So you, if you're not scoring more goals in an attacking system than you were in defensive systems, I worry. However, Kane was still bagging 25 goals in them defensive systems. You had put him in this attacking system now or someone near his calibre or someone, if you can get close to that level, you know, you'd be, you could be talking about a different season this season altogether. So for me, look, that's where I'd be looking at. But we'll wait and see on that one. But Donovan, great call, my man. Really appreciate your time. I'll let you go off and watch the game and I'll keep this move or keep this rocking. Yeah, let's get you in for that second half, man. And, uh, like, just end on a positivity. Like, we didn't play horrible. We outpossessed teams like we do every single game of the season. And um, we contained them well, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, other than other than that set piece, they had no mm -hmm. threat from attacks, like, off the off the deck, you know, or open play. And the counterattack was pretty much nullified. Mm -hmm. Other than that time, that event slipped because of the, like, I don't want to sound like tie, but because of the conditions. So, yeah, keep our, keep our head on straight. <laughs> keep our head on straight. And, uh you know, like like I said, as long as uh, as long as we turn up for that Woolwich game, you know, I'm 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 hopeful for the rest of the season. So, my big hope for that Woolwich game is that you know they're they're deflated and they're knocked out of the title by then, and uh, you know we could we could piss all over their parade. That'd be absolutely ideal. But Donovan, you go and enjoy your day off work. Well earned. Have a good rest. Uh, good. I hope you enjoy uh, and have a good practice later on in training. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Cheers, guys. Big up. Have a great one. Great call in from Donovan there, guys. Big them up in the comment section below. Great call. But look, we are going to keep this moving because I'm aware there's probably people that do want to watch the Aston Villa and City game as well. Uh, so we're going to keep it moving and get them on and off so they can all watch the game. The next guy we have on is DJ AK. And you do see him in the comments a lot. So let's bring him on. Let's hear what he has to say. Big up, DJ. I love the jersey, by the way. I have that as well. It's gorgeous. You hear me all right? I can hear you loud and clear, my man. How are you keeping? Always a good start. <laughs> no, it's a great start. It's a great start. But look, um, you, what, what's your thoughts on the game last night? You know, there's, there's sort of a mixed reaction to it. Some are saying, look, it's okay. You know, it's probably a fair result. And some really angry with the sort of, uh, you, you you know, the draw saying we, you, we lacked a bit of bite up front. We should have went on to win that game. I mean, where do you stand on it? Um, I don't know, really. I think um, we always seem to go backwards when it comes to, like, taking Especially, um, you know, we got an advantage to take, you know, we go and beat Aston Villa, mm. then um, we go and lose to Fulham. Mm. Then same thing happens again. We play and then we draw to West Ham. Mm. So, I not really take these chances, you know. Uh, it's, no, it's just disappointing, you know. We, we, we should have beaten West Ham yesterday. West mm. Ham, they're not a great side, personally. No, mm. we should have gone for the goal. So, yeah, it's disappointing, but here you go. No, look, when it, when it comes to West Ham, look, I'm, a, I'm an of the look, they're effective at what they do, right? But teams like us, we should be beating them if we want to be getting into the likes of Champions League. Teams that sit back because we're an attacking team by nature, that should really suit us. You know, they're not looking to really push back too much the other way, really. Um, one second. DJ, do you want to just try logging out and logging back in? Yeah, no problem. I'll hold your spot for you. I'm good speaker, so I'll hold your spot for you, Jay. All right? Uh, so, guys, we're going to let DJ log out and log back in. We will keep his spot for him. Um, so, we'll keep. We'll take a couple of comments here for the moment. We've got uh, Sundeep Patel says, I could be wrong, but I think it's probably been a long time since we won two key games in a row. Look, it seems like that. It seems like it's been a while, all right, on that regard. Uh, uh, um, Sundeep, 
It does. You're absolutely spot on. Well, big up, DJ. Yeah, I, th I think that's a bit better there now. But um, look, West Ham is a team we really should be beating. Um, I'm disappointed. You know, we they, they're the perfect kryptonite. They've done us in preseason. They've done us at stadium, and they took a point off us last night. You know, they are becoming a bit of a a, a problem for us. And for me, it just comes down to us not taking our chances. It was the same preseason. How many times do we have shots in their goals? Didn't take any of them. Early on in the season, you know, we went one up nice and early. Romero put us in the lead, dominated possession. We didn't take enough chances to kill them off, and it was the exact same last night. I mean. DJ, where do you stand on the forward line? Because there's maybe people like me who are frustrated with it and think the forward line needs to be better and that will only happen with science. But there's other people saying out there, look, the forward line is fine. You know, we've, we've scored, you know, maybe the same amount of goals as we did last season. The forward area ain't the problem. Where do you stand on that? Uh, I think myself. I think when you look at a player like Harry Kane, like world-class, a world-class, you know, you're now relying on other, other players in our team. To mm. goals, you know. I mean, Son, if he has a different form, you know, who else is going to take those chances? You know, um, if if Son's form dips, then it, you know, he misses a few chances, and then you know, so you you, you you're sort of really asking against it, you know. Mm. Just, I think we need to go out and buy someone. We need we need goal poacher. We need someone who's going to you know bully bully players and. You know, and really, really take the chances. The amount of balls that are going in the in in towards the goal now. You know, Johnson mm. find a bit of form and showing what he can actually do. And you know, you need someone in there that's going to, going to put the ball away. It's a bit like with me. You know, I I grew up seeing very different. It was an out. Mm. You know, week in week out, you see him. You know, you could you could call him a goal hanger or whatever or whatever. Mm. Uh, that ball will be going in the net. Yeah, thought it'd be going in there. Mm. So I've um, I've, <laughs> I've um, I've seen a lot of um, teams over the years. You know, I mean, I've been supporting Spurs since I was. So uh, my first um, first ever game was against Aston Villa. Believe it or not, um, that was when I was the R D Les and Ricky Villa, and that was their first home game for Tottenham. And we still lost, and I still support them. So, <laughs> do you know what? You must be similar age to my dad then, because he was for sort of similar era, Ricky Ardiles and uh, um, or uh, Ardiles and and Ricky V as well. He's sort of similar era to that regard. So you must be in and around the same age as same age as my old lad. But DJ, I mean, you speak about the sort of striker that you're looking for there. What names would you would you like to see Tottenham maybe target over the summer then? Um, well, obviously, everyone keeps going about the way always seems to be box. Um, yeah, I don't know how many to get him, but he's just I, I, I like to see in the Tottenham side. I think he's one second, say that again, DJ. I think, I think your sound dropped there, my man. I'm just saying, I think um, someone like Ivan Tony. I know he's been banded around quite a lot, mm. but ideal, ideal striker for us. I think mm. he's scored a hell of a lot of goals. Mm. Um, you know, he's the sort of player I would go for. Do you know? I heard an interesting sort of question on the um, the overlap there the other day, where you know it was questioning whether Ivan Tony should go to the Euros with England or whether it should be Ollie Watkins. And someone made the point that it should be Ollie Watkins because he offers something different to Ivan Tony. But Carragher made the point. He was like, you know, if you're playing with Kane, you're so used to playing with Kane. If he's not there, surely you want someone that offers very, very similar to what he does. And when you look at Ivan Tony's game, there is a lot of similarities. What I love about him is, you know, he, he's sort of got an all, he's got a good all-round game. Balls come into the box, he'll go and attack it. He's great at holding up the ball. He can run at players, you know. He can link up play with others. Uh, and, you know, he's a decent passer of the ball as well. I actually really like Ivan Tony. It'd be interesting to see how much Bradford really want because I know that um, it'd be interesting as well to see whether Arsenal can pull the funds because I know they'd probably look to go and target him. But there'd be a few clubs in, in for him this summer, I reckon. So it'd be very interesting to see whether Tottenham will match the finances that it would probably take to pull him out of Brentford and bring him to Tottenham. Um, if not, Vlatovic at Juve would be another guy that I would uh, 
that I really like to, 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 to bring here for sure. You know, he's very similar. Big, strong guy, physical as well. I think he's got all the attributes to suit the uh, Premier League. Uh, but DJ, last question, my man, for you I've got. Um, what do you make of the finances that came out today and uh, Daniel Levy taking a bonus even though he's made a loss? <laughs> it's nice to leave. It's not great. <laughs> what I like about Daniel Levy, but hey, um, again, going back to when I first went to watch Tottenham, from where we've come from to where we are now, we are in the next 10 years or so going to be a powerhouse in, in world football, just mm. alone. You, we've got a multi functional stadium, you know, and in business, you need it's like with. Um, say, like a, a race course or something like that. You know, I, I live not far from um, Sandown Race Course. And it's a massive building. And oh, one second, my man. Your, your sound has dropped again. Start, say that again. Just saying about the, um, the stadium and with having a removable pitch and having multi-fun, you know, having so many different things going there. Mm. Um, it, it creates, it's going to create money, hopefully, to be invested into the team. Mm. It's um, for me, you know, hopefully we'll, uh, we can start putting some money into the team and, you know, hopefully start pushing, mm. actually win something. Mm. <laughs> oh, look, look, that's what we're all waiting for, you know. I mean, I'm dying to win some trophies. I went to the, um, I went to the, the, the FA Cup final when Gas, uh, uh, the, I went to all the games actually leading up to the Cup final in 91 and uh, obviously went to the final as well and it was actually on my birthday and we won so can't the final that saved that, that saved Tottenham financially right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not Jess that's some memories there's some memories to have though my man you know at least and they're the memories that I would like you know being able to follow yeah. a run all the way to a cup final look I do have the one that we won with Robbie Keane and Jonathan Woodgate and stuff like that but uh, you know I definitely would like an FA Cup or a league in the bag um, but also, where do you stand on on maybe talks about, you know, investment coming in again from outside sources? You know, it's sort of been something that's been battered away for a while. Uh, do you think the board that, you know, because we're not, like I said, the Donovan, all the revenue streams that they've generated, it's still not enough to turn over a profit once you pay out what you have to pay out and stuff like that. Do you think now they're at the point where they probably are looking for sort of investment now to come in and help them keep it sort of sustainable? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um I think you look at, uh, you know, with our naming rights, you know, what's happening with that at the minute, you mm. know, um, there's, that's gone very quiet. So something like that, even something like that would generate a hell of a lot of money. Even mm. I would like to see us lose our, our name, you know, as in, mm. as in stadium, but it's, I think it's an inevitable thing that's going to happen. So, you know, investment uh, in the club is never a bad thing. Um and again, let's hope it, uh, it goes in the right direction. Let's hope they, they can start mm -hmm. back, in, back in the manager and, and, and hopefully mm -hmm. we can have a successful season. Mm -hmm. you know? And are you, do, you, do you fully believe in Ange? Are you, are you fully behind Ange heading into next year? Do you think he is the right guy to you know, give, give that investment to, take that leap behind? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I just like, the, I like, his, I like the way that he uh, acts around the players. I think, um, you know, he's a, he seems to be like a great guy. Um, mm. You know, football-wise, it's going to take a bit of time. You know, we're, we're in a rebuild. There's so many fans like moaning and saying, oh, you know, you know, he's not doing this, he's not doing that. He's still got teething problems. He's mm -hmm. still got to have a bit of time. It doesn't mm. happen overnight, you know. You've got to give the man time. And mm. for me, I think, I think, you know, this season was always going to be a bit of a rocky one. You lose one of your best players, if not the best player we've ever had. Mm. And, you know, and then you've got to try and fill that void. And yeah. me, he's doing it slowly. And mm. it's going to take a bit of time. But I, I'm fully behind him and... Uh, in Andrew, in, in Andrew Trust, as you say. Oh, I absolutely love that. And I love these motto, we never stop, especially when we score a late goal. I mean, it, it, it's it's just it's just when it all comes together, it's absolutely amazing. But look, I'm in agreement with you. I think there's, I've seen enough. I think there's plenty of good to get behind. I think we're just a couple of pieces are short of really pushing on and becoming a really good team, but also a consistent team, you know, and that will only happen if you get rid of some of the players that it's clear that Ange Postacoglu is barely relying upon anymore.
get rid of them guys, you know, freshen up the squad, bring new faces in, create a bit more competition. And hopefully even the guys that we've got in the first 11, you know, will hopefully bring them to a better level and a more consistent level. I do. I think there's been plenty of good, you know, I, I think one thing that people don't take into account is we lost our best player over the summer. We had a change in guard and goalkeeper in for the first time in a decade. A whole yeah. new back line heading into there. You know, a whole new system going from defensive and trying to change the players' mentality and enthusiasm and stuff like that from defensive system to an attacking system. He's had to he's he's had to do a lot. And I think he's come up with the answers for a lot of it. Yes, okay, there's some games where maybe he's come up short. But that's where you just need to give him more pieces there to the squad. I'm fully with you. I'm fully behind Andrew. I think he is the right guy. Absolutely, I think I think I think it's uh, you know a lot of the time uh, us as fans we're all guilty. I'm even guilty myself. You know, mm. you get especially the way we started this season. You're thinking, oh, hold on a minute. You know, what's what's happening here? This is this is a bit unlike Tottenham. You know, yeah. In ten games in a row, what's happening? Hold on a minute. Um, you know, and you get a bit carried away. Yeah. But the reality is, the guy is on a rebuild, and that's what everyone needs to remember. The guy is rebuilding the squad. Yeah. And it just doesn't happen overnight. You know, you've got to give, mm. got to give the man time and hopefully the board back him and give him the right tools. The one thing I do like about Ange is that he doesn't seem to be uh, a manager that goes out and buys a hundred million pound player. Mm. So he seems to find these little gems and um, which actually work, you know. Mm. So let's just see. Mm. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can get in. I think we're, you know, I think we've finished maybe five, five, fifth or I'd like to say fourth. Um, but I think realistically we've finished fifth, something mm. like that. Um, which to be fair isn't a bad season. And in this first no. season, mm. you know. So No, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a bad season and hopefully the coefficient points work in our favour and fifth would be enough to put us into a, a qualifier to get into the Champions League next season. That would be absolutely ideal. And look, it's massive progress on where we were last season, you know. Last season we didn't even qualify for Europe. So me, I'd be delighted just to have some sort of European football back here next season, but hopefully it is Champions League football. But look, I need to clear something up. Are you actually a DJ? Do you spin the decks? I I actually use You do. Yes, I used to be a DJ. I, I used to DJ in clubs. Um, I used to do like uh, mixed records and stuff like that. I've still actually got vinyl and I've still got my decks. So I still. <laughs> That's unbelievable. That's yeah. absolutely unbelievable. What we'll have to do is when we uh, win a trophy, we'll have to get you on here for a set, roll back, uh, you know, roll, roll back the years and stuff like that, my man. Also, just quickly before we let you go, uh, I think halfway through the, uh, the, the, the chat we were having, I think you maybe. Um, moved your phone a little bit and it probably didn't block up the speaker and you were much more easier to, to hear and it was no problems with it. So just next time when you come on, just make sure you don't have that speaker block because you actually have great things to say and I, I just want people to hear what you have to say. So thank you very much for your time. This, um, this actual top is an original top and I can't believe it actually still fits me. So Wow. Retro, this isn't a retro top. This is actually an original one. It's the real deal. Wow. That's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I've, I've I've got a mock version of that, so I do. I've got the retro one. It's it's nice. I do like it. Do you know yeah. what one I'm dying to get my hands on? Just quickly is the uh, Adidas one, the yellow one with the blue up here on the sleeves. I'm dying to get my hands on it. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think I've got that one. I've got a few old ones. I've even got a uh, an FA Cup '91 shirt. That's an original one as well. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> nice. So keep them. Do they all still fit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the job. That's the job. You know, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. But DJ, my man, great speaking to you. And please come back and see us again on these fan shows. And let's have more conversations going forward. Really appreciate your time this evening. And go and enjoy that Man City Liverpool game or Man City Aston Villa game. City are one up to the good, which is great. Yeah, we could do with City scoring a few goals, actually. So, yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. It'd be nice, especially uh, that goal difference that Dermot was talking about. Well, my man. Yeah. You're going to have a good evening. We'll speak again soon. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks for having me on. Thank Come you on. for your time. Come on, you Spurs. Uh, everyone, big up DJ. What a first guest of appearance, you know. I'm glad we got that speaker sorted out because he's got some great things to say. So happy days on that one. We know going forward. But what um, 
what an appearance. People saying big up DJ and stuff. They really like them coming on. And the fact that he is a real DJ as well, that's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, you know, if we, uh, if we ever make it to like 50,000 subscribers, we can all have one big party and we can have DJ AK in the mix. That'd be absolutely unbelievable. But look, let's keep this moving. I think the next guest we've got on is the one and only Mia. Mia, good evening. How are you keeping? Good evening. How are you doing? Congratulations on 14K Day. Well deserved. Oh, well, look, thank you very much. But, you know, last night sort of uh, result ruined it a little. Like, I, I couldn't really enjoy yeah. it. I was really hoping for a win. But, um, look, it is what it is. We got there. And thank you very much for your contributions and helping us get there. It wouldn't be done without you coming on and stuff like that. But, um, look, where are you at after yesterday's game and performance? Um, I'm disappointed. I think I'm disappointed that we didn't do more, Dave. I just felt like at times mm. we were just too slow, like... We were just, you know, basically plodding along. Big up, King Hoddle. Um, yeah, I felt like we were a bit ploddy at times um, and not mm. quick enough. When we were quick, that's when we looked dangerous. Um, of mm. course, they had a chance at the end to win it with um, Antonio. Luckily, that did obviously um, result in a goal. Um, mm. And we had our chance with Destiny, which if it would have fallen to somebody else, could have easily resulted in a goal. Yeah. So the last bit was a bit frantic, but... It felt like it was in section. So the very first section of that game at the, the first half, I thought we bossed it. We were absolutely bossing it. They didn't know what to do with us. Literally, they didn't know what to do. Then we allowed them to get into the game. And then the last five-ish minutes, we had a few corners, but didn't take advantage of having corner after corner. We didn't look dangerous in those set pieces, which is a shame. Because really, we should take advantage with a game like this of those um, set pieces, and we just didn't. Yeah. Then the next, the second half, the next section was they come out with a rocket up their backside and they looked dangerous. And I was concerned at a point because they looked like they were out, out yeah. to get us. They were yeah. like, we are going to get you. And then that settled down a little bit. And the game, like I say, got a bit ploddy. We had possession, mm -hmm. didn't really do anything with it. We didn't really try anything different. Me personally, I already said my starting lineup would have been Richie because of the physicality. Mm. I felt like we needed that physicality from Richie. He gets mm. in their faces. He's aggressive, you know. And I do think that we, I do think we really uh, needed that. Like you said, the balls across the box a lot of the time. Richie is there. I said this in another game mm. when we had that ball going across that box. A lot of the time, Richie knows where to be. And he will just poach a goal. And I know people mm. might not like that he's a bit of a poacher of goals, but a goal is a goal, right? Yeah. Um, I thought Werner was poor. He was poor yesterday. Um, after having a good game, it's really a shame to see him be so poor. Um, Brennan Johnson, in my opinion, was our best player. He at least yeah. tried. He tried so hard, bless him. Um, yeah. And it's good to see Brennan Johnson have a bit of um, a bit of vim. He's getting a yeah. bit of sassiness about him, and I like it. I'm seeing that little bit of a sassy side to him, and I quite like seeing him like that. Do you know when it comes to Brennan Johnson? I, I seen something the other day, a couple of pictures of his celebration. It's always him ripping the piss out of someone. Yeah. Uh, a lot of his celebrations, which I do like, you know, I do like that. It's that bit of cheekiness. But you know what, Mia, for me, I think yesterday sort of, it's like something maybe starting to click and get something because, you know, it, as being an impact sub, he's been good this season in terms of, you know, he's got more, more goal, goal contributions than anybody else off the bench in terms of goals and assists. But my biggest thing with Johnson always has been when he's selected to start games, he, he struggles to get into them. But yesterday, I thought he was absolutely brilliant. You know, he got the ball. He done what, what, what we've been screaming for him to do. Be direct. You've got the pace to kill. Go direct at your man. And he was putting them boxes. And I actually thought he'd done brilliantly uh, yesterday in that regard. Um, I agree with you on Werner, but it's a strange one, Werner, because he started off the game on fire. For the first 10 minutes, he had Kufal all over the place. What went wrong? Why did we stop giving the ball to Werner down that side? Or why did he maybe stop demanding it? I don't I really don't know what happened. It's almost like he he dipped in confidence. It's almost mm. like his confidence sort of went true. Like, no, I don't know what happened to him. I really don't. Because on the other side, Brennan Johnson was still trying to get those um those um crosses into him. Yeah. You no, know, and like he just wasn't there or it was just, yeah, I don't know. He was just really, really off it yesterday, mm. I felt. And even Sonny, I thought Sonny was really ineffective. That first half, I had to disagree with what Dermot said about uh, Madison. I thought that um, Madison was poor yesterday. I think in that second half, he grew into the game a little bit, but then he got taken off. Mm. And we don't know why he got taken off, though. 
Do you know what, yeah. me? That's a weird one. Just quickly on that, I want to have a discussion with you on that actually, because they asked Ange Postecoglou after the game, "Is it an injury?" And you look at the last two games. You know, you're searching for that winner, and he's hauled Madison off the field. Um, when we bought him for reasons like this, right? Which I don't quite understand. Is there something gone wrong between the relationship between Madison and Postecoglou? Um, no, I think maybe he just genuinely thinks that he wants to maybe change what was happening. I don't. I honestly don't know, but I don't. I can't see um, Pastor Cooper being like that, really, because don't mm. forget when he spoke to him at the beginning, and um, when we were getting him, he did say that what Pastor Cooper said to him actually hit home a little bit. And I mm. do think that I, um, with Madison, he's got a little bit of that arrogance, as in he's just on that borderline of being a little bit sometimes, maybe over a tiny bit, and mm. maybe it's him coming off of that attitude that you're a bit like, oh, maybe there's a problem. But I think that's just him. But we want players to be angry if they're going to be yeah. uh, taken off. So yeah. it's kind of like, I don't think it's Posta Coglu. I just don't. But I agree mm. with you what you said about Madison. I think getting kicked around and that, he needs to just get up and deal with it. And mm. I wouldn't have actually started Madison this day. My midfield was a bit of a wild one, what I picked. And everyone was a bit like, really? But I, would actually, pick, I actually would have picked picked Kulu because I think Kulu would have been I know he was rubbish yesterday I know when he come on he wasn't good but mm. he's got the strength that I think that Madison when he gets yeah. kicked about that we we needed because the midfield um they're like very feisty and big and strong in West mm. Ham and I think that that physicality is what we needed in like a lot and I would have played Benton Court and I would have played Saar so I would have mm. had a completely different, mid, different midfield I would have played um, I would have played Werner on the right. I would have played Richard down the middle and Sonny on the left. Mm. So. Do you know what? Uh, my, my front line yesterday would have been Johnson on the right. I did say I'd actually give Johnson a reward him for once. I think people were shocked. Uh, but I did say, you know, Richie through the middle and Son off the left. Um, but what based off what you've seen yesterday, what midfield would you pick going into the, fo- in, into the Nottingham Forest game? Because... I'm of the opinion. I actually think Basuma had a very good game. I think, okay, he didn't do anything fancy, but you know, all the basics correct. I think, yeah, he did all right. Core was superb yesterday. I think he was absolutely yeah. unbelievable. And to a degree, I thought Madison was actually very good yesterday. But I think where I, when I went back and rewatched the game, Mia, when I when I look back at it, a lot of Madison's work was from deeper. I think maybe that's yeah. that's what contributed to him being hauled off because it wasn't in the final third where he was really making that impact. It was more putting balls into the forward line, but from a deeper position. But you know so why he does? Would you go? I think that Madison does that, though, because he doesn't have enough space through the middle, further up mm. the pitch. Mm. So he gets the ball further back to be able to have that space, but he he's not affected that way. So mm. the thing is, if he's there in that part of the pitch, he gets kicked a lot as well, and they normally put two man on him. So that's mm. why I said I wouldn't necessarily have played him. But midfield... For the Forest game, I probably would go Madison, Saar and Benny. I think Saar got dropped. And I'm, I, even though he didn't have much time to really do much, but mm. when he is on, he does cover a lot of grass. He covers yeah. a lot of grass. And he does get back. And also, he does push us forward. Yeah. In the last game against Luton, he was our best player in that first half. He was yeah. pushing forward so much, man. He was there trying to do crosses, and he done some brilliant crosses. Um, mm. So, yeah, for me, it's got to be Saar to play. Although Basuma had an okay game, I do think mm. that we need to put Saar in for this Forest mm. game. No, look, I, I, I would agree. For me, I'd actually like to see Saar put into the number six role and push Pesuma, keep him in that number eight role, keep Madison in there and see how that goes. Um, it'd be interesting to see what he does against Forrest. Like you said, Saar was dropped, yeah. so will he come back in? But, you know, will he, will he really stick with the likes of Pesuma, Bentecourt and Madison? It'd be interesting to see what happens on that regard. But looking at the game last night, we were a bit tootless up front. But me, it's a, it's a difficult one because... You look at the goal scoring stats, right? We're sort of on par to sort of beat maybe what we scored last season. But when a lot of people look at the game state, a lot of people sort of come away from games frustrated because despite dominating possession, we maybe don't take enough shots or create enough with the possession we dominate. What area that team needs to be improved to make us better, to be title challengers like Ange wants us to be next season? Ooh, I think that probably our wingers, I think wingers is a problem. 
Mm. And I do think that the midfield, we do need to have somebody who is going to be a bit more of a boss in that midfield because I don't know. Basuma has gone off a bit. So that's not really his game. So I think that somebody who is mm. mobile, yeah. and basically a mobile, better version, maybe of Hoybier, but a better version, like someone who's a bit more mobile but can come on and like really, you know, be strong mm. in that midfield because I do think we sometimes need that, especially well, with Madison. Is, is Hoiberg with a bit more energy, right? Hoiberg with a bit more, like, um, je ne sais quoi, shall we say, like yeah, a, bit more, yeah. a little bit more fluidity in his hips, a little bit, a bit more, more fluid. mobile, yeah, more mobile, more, um, just as physical, like someone who's physically strong. But yeah. mobile and also very much forwards thinking still. Someone who's still going to boss it, but still want to be attacking, you know, not someone yeah. who's going to be a more defensive minded. Although it is someone who is a bit more defensive per se, but you don't want somebody who is going to sit there and be slow and ploddy on the ball. You want mm. someone who's going to be quick with what they do. And like I say, mm. it's that movement, that ability to turn on the ball. You know, yeah. just turn, swivel, have good vision, looking around them, looking around, knowing exactly where players are going to be to spray yeah. the ball, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, look, I agree. You know, look, if you could take James Ward Prowse's passing, put it into Heiberg and Sars Mobility and put it into Heiberg, you'd have the yeah. right ideal sort of player there. Also, in the forward area, I mean, there's been a lot of debate this season, you know, wingers, strikers. I mean, what's your opinion? Do you keep Son and Richardson as your two strikers next season and focus on improving them wide mm -hmm. areas, or do you sort of push some back out to the wing, bring in another winger anyway, and still bring in another striker to compete with Richardson? I think we need another winger and another striker. I actually oh, quite like um, yeah. Isaac from Newcastle. Yeah, he's phenomenal. He's brilliant, man. If we could get Isaac, what an absolute mm. phenomenal sign that would be. Premier League proven. We know mm. that he scored goals. I think that's, you know, I think that would be brilliant for us to have um, a player like him to mm. challenge Richarlison. If Richarlison is going to throw his toys out the pram, which I'd hope that he don't. I hope not. Mm. Um, I like... I. I don't. I like Richarlison. So mm. if he does throw his toys at the prime and doesn't want to be that striker that doesn't yeah. have to challenge, then would have to say goodbye to him and and get someone else. But I think we should probably, if it was my choice, I would probably be quite cutthroat and say get rid of a Charleston and get two more in, mm. get a younger striker maybe and get an Isaac. So then mm. put someone challenging Isaac who is maybe a little bit younger, a bit more like of a malleable player where you can mould yeah. them a little bit and have an Isaac who's um, obviously experienced and obviously we know yeah. he can score goals. Yeah. So if I was going to be really harsh, <laughs> that's probably what I would do. As much as I do really, really like Richardson, he's a lovely guy as well. He's, he's just um, a really nice all-round guy, yeah. but is he really what we need? I yeah. don't know. Well, look, it'll be interesting to see what they sort of do on that in the summer because, they, you know, there are some reports today maybe suggesting Tottenham will have to sell to maybe fund some, uh, you know, reinvestment yeah. into that squad. Um, I mean, what do you make of the finances? Were you surprised, first of all, so, that we made a lot? No, because we've not made a profit. Um, if you look at our books, I don't think we have made a profit in a while, to be fair. Um, I think we lost 50, is it around 50 million last year? Um, but I was reading it because I like I think to. Over three done... years, we're at two hundred and fifty odd million, aren't we? Over three years. Yeah, it's and I think that um, a lot of the time, money when you're with it, something so big, a huge um, thing like Tottenham, you will have um, budgets set out. So they would have already probably predicted that there will be some losses, but obviously this is a bigger loss than they expected, um, and they said that the team costs have risen by twenty one percent. Um, so that re re that was a rise to 487.9 million. Um, so, and also we didn't get into Europe, so that obviously mm. money, but they do budget. So when people are saying, oh, this is an excuse, we're not going to buy anybody. Um, so we're not going to actually um, get anyone and whatnot. I don't think that's true because we always budget anyway, Dave. We've mm. got a budget and we know we're going to lose. Yeah. So um, I think, so for me, 
it, it, it's not we're not going to be like oh no we've got to scrimp and save but obviously we want money to be able to keep it sustainable that's what he said he wants us to be able to keep it sustainable so therefore maybe an extra investment would be a, um, something we can do so whilst i'm not defending daniel levy per se i mm. kind of understand if you think about it from a business point of view mm. and not from your heart as a tottenham supporter mm. it isn't as big a deal i think as what maybe people are mm. making it if that makes sense mm -hmm. maybe the three million bonus that daniel levy got isn't really a great thing to come out but the end of the day he doesn't i don't think he gives himself the bonus does he not does not someone up higher Decide. Look, I, I presume the bonus is probably in the contract that he signs, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, look, it, it just doesn't look good that the guy's taking that sort of level of bonus with Tottenham making a loss and stuff like that. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't sit right with me. Um, but look, in terms of the finances, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting, you know, are we still in a position to be able to maybe uh, take advantage of other people's financial fair play and mishaps than maybe what we first taught and stuff like that? But look, we'll know more of that over the next coming few days, I reckon. Yeah, I just, I, like I say, I just think that a lot of people um, are going, like being a bit like up in arms about things and not realising the way that budgets work. They would have set out budgets. And I think actually the cane money isn't in this budget. So yeah. the, the cost of Madison and I can't remember who else it was. Van is in Vem, this, I think, isn't it? I think it was Van der Ven was in this one. So when you when you weigh it up um, and we didn't have the K money towards that either, yeah, I think that obviously when it comes to more of a um, financial point of view, it's not that I defend the club, Dave, it's just that sometimes I can see it maybe from a oh, different look. kind of perspective that's like maybe look. than other people. Look, 100%. Look, I'm one of them. Everyone's entitled to their opinions, you know. Nobody yeah, has to believe what I have to believe, you know. Opinions is what makes the world go around. And at the end of the day, there's people that choose to see it from the business point of view and there's people that choose to see it from a sort of footballing point of view and stuff like that. You know, what I would say is people that do have different opinion, it is good to listen to other people. Like, for instance, someone like Sean, although people may not agree what he's saying, you know, he's telling you basically what Daniel Levy's thinking. So I think, you know, it's it's valid to hear, you know, so, uh, you know different opinions on it. Joe, you know what? With Sean, I'm always really interested in what he has to say because he's mm -hmm. he's actually, when it comes to the way he thinks with his logic, he's very much like me. So I was made for the fucker to get out of bed and do a stream on it. Yeah, hurry up, Sean. Come along now. <laughs> we want to know what you're saying. But he's always very fair in his analysis, which I really like because he's not somebody to like hide behind like, oh, I'm not sure. He'll just say it how it is and he'll give an honest opinion. Mm. So I I, swear, I do really, really like it um, with mm. Sean. That's why I do I do quite listen to Sean. Even though I call him a donut, which he is a massive donut. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely, uh, I do listen to what he has to say when it comes to the financial side mm. of things, for sure. Mm. It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for sure. But Mia, tell people why they need to get over to their channel and subscribe. Uh, because you can hear more of my fascinating opinions. Um, I'm joking. Um, I like to actually listen to other people. I have really good crowding with me. The people come in my chat are all lovely. Um, so we always have really good conversation. I do members shows so people can come on and have their say. And today I did mine um, and it was really good. It was like a really good conversation. We didn't always agree, but um, it's good because we have like a decent discussion, no shouting, no swearing at each other. It's, it's just a, a, a good place to have good discussions with people. I do match reviews, match previews. I do um, match instant match reaction with Jimbo. Big up, Jimbo. Hope he's yeah. feeling better soon. He's not feeling too well. He's got man flu, bless him. I'd say he wasn't um, happy with Richie not getting uh, too much involvement yesterday. But, guys... I know, you know neither was I, to be fair. <laughs> guys, what I would say is, you know, over here, a lot of our content sort of comes out midday, you know, later on in the day. Mia, I don't know how she does it, but she's alert and ready early every morning to Always. go. So make sure, you know, when you wake up, that's the place to go looking. So make sure you get over to Mia's channel, smash that subscribe button, and, uh, you know, check out her content and that. So, but Mia... Thank you very much. Really enjoyed Thanks this discussion me. this evening. Um, hopefully you enjoyed your dinner. I will be going to enjoy my soon. So uh, you know, yeah, like Joe. What I, I actually, I was actually very naughty and ordered from the Jamaican place. So I had um, jerk chicken and macaroni cheese and um, plantain. Oh, so good! Oh, I love, stop. I love stop. my Jamaican food, man. It's one of my absolute favourites. I always order from him as well. 
and mm. he knows it and he also does desserts sometimes and these desserts are phenomenal honestly oh. they're so good you're making me hungry i'm gonna have to boot you off now you're making me too hungry my stomach's speaking to me <laughs> But guys, please do get over and check out Mia. Like I said, every morning there's something up there on the channel. So make sure you get over and check that out. But Mia, thank you very much for this evening. And we'll speak to you again very, very soon. Speak to you soon. Right, See you bye. soon, Mia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Mia making me hungry there. I'm absolutely starving. I hope you have to concentrate for the next few minutes, you know, thinking of jerk chicken and, and stuff like that. You know, nice dessert, sticky toffee pudding, chocolate brownie. Chocolate by that is brilliant when you cut it open and the chocolate melts in the middle, scoop of vanilla. It's absolutely heaven. But look, anyway, enough of that. Let's keep it moving. Let's bring on KPV. KPV, how are you keeping, sir? Good, man. Just been watching other football games yesterday and been texting the missus on TikTok anyway. So how'd you get yeah. on your date, by the way? Good man, good. Been Did out you of her. <laughs> Did you win her over? Of course. Like, yeah, man. I've been out of her two times last week. Went to Come on, KPV. Week, then I went out to Weatherspoons on Thursday and going to the Royal Alpha Hall in London on Monday. So she's performing. Nice. So, yeah. So, if only Spurs were as consistent as you, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I wish they were, but... And I want to wish a legend a happy birthday from two days ago, Teddy Sheringham. Happy birthday, mate. Yeah, two days ago, a legend himself. Yeah, hates Arsenal and plays for both Tottenham and West Ham. Should have won yesterday. If a doggy didn't miss that chance, we would have won. But, yeah, we should have beaten them lot yesterday because, as I said, we was robbed. Of, they robbed us at our place in December, if you watch the game back. Bowen was, yeah, clearly offside, and Walpole's was, if you watch, because Bowen was actually robbing us, so should have won yesterday. And we've not lost three times to this, and oh, oh. lost in a pre-season frame, and then, yeah, in the Premier League, we lost in December. Your KPV is, your audio is dropped, KPV. KPV. That's because my dad's calling me. But oh, Mia. Tell him you're busy. Hold on, Tell dad. Tell him you're busy. Wait a minute, okay. <laughs> I'm well, where did it here, go but, KPV? yeah, you I'll take a point. I wanted to win, but yeah, yeah I'll take a 1-1 one -one draw. And brilliant, again, from Brennan Johnson. He's got more goal contributions than Martin No Show Odegaard. So, <laughs> yeah, where's everyone saying, where's the rival fans saying Odegaard's got more? What has mm. he done? So, yeah, brilliant goal and another assist for Turbo Werner. He's got more assists than Odegaard has. So, but yeah, I wanted to win last night, but we've got Forest at home, man. I'm actually fuming. It's not on Monday because yeah, we moving. were supposed to play Monday against them, but because of the trains, it's the. But does it not suit yeah, you being because you're Sunday at Royal Albert like, Hall on Monday, aren't what's you? So going does on? It not the family don't like us move. playing Mondays. So, but yeah, we've got to play them again. Nuno's only beaten us away two times. That was with Wolves. Wembley, then our new stadium. And today, 2019, it's our anniversary. We, the new stadium was opened and we beat Palace. Mm. So, five years ago today. Mm. What do you make in a new stadium? Right? You know, as, oh, as I, I, they delivered what, 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 what they said they would when they built I can't it. Can't hear you, Dave. You can't hear me. Testing, I one, two. Hear. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? One, yeah. two. One, two. Test him. One, two. I can't hear it, man. All right, KPV, you just... You, uh, one second. Mm. People are saying when you get a phone call, it shuts off the audio, KPV. Um, I'll put it in the chat. Just speak for another few minutes. Go on. Yeah. I, I'll i take a point, as I said, but I wanted to win. But, yeah, got for a Sunday. And that's all uh, we, uh, that matters, being Forest, And then the next couple of games are going to win. And we're going to have a huge say in this title race on who wins it. Imagine we stopped Arsenal winning it. And... People don't remember this, but we stopped Liverpool winning it two seasons ago. Mm -hmm. We should have beaten them at our house, but we drew 2-2. And then 
we go Anfield to draw one all. Like, so at least we stop Liverpool winning it, and we're going to stop <coughs> Arsenal winning it because they're not winning the league. I'd rather it be Liverpool City, but imagine we stopped them two winning it and City win it, but just don't want Arsenal winning it. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, people, hope everyone is all good, and I'll see you all for the next one. And as always. Come on, you Spurs. Big Andrew Trust. We never stop. Big up, KPV. Big up, KPV. Absolute legend. So I think the problem that happens is, is when you do it on your phone and someone rings you, it can knock off the audio. You know, I used to have to beg people, stop ringing me when I'm streaming, when I used to do this channel on my mobile phone. It was absolute madness. But in fairness, KPV dealt with it well, told you all his thoughts, and he's off again. And he's on another day on Monday at the Royal Albert Hall. So we do wish him... The best of luck on that. But we are down to the final two guests of the evening. And then we will be calling it a night. Let's bring on the one and only Felix Bald Bean Counter. How are you keeping, sir? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. I'm trying to be as uh, as good as I can after that last night. I'm not going to lie. For me, I thought we played so well up to the final third. But ultimately, I sort of... Left disappointed. We should have had enough to take our three points against West Ham. What's your thoughts on it? A hundred percent agree. And it's I feel like the game was a bit em emblematic of like a, con a problem we've been having since the first ten games. And mm. one of the key things I see it as is like there's many things, but if we're going to lack the long balls and the long shots and the attacking set pieces, and we have to really do well in at the Ange ball system and making the most of possession. I felt in the first 10 games, we did that really well. And I felt like people, players like Basuma and Madison were way more press resistant. Yeah. And now, now they just aren't. They Like now, as you see, we're passing out from the back and it, it, it gets into our midfield. And sorry, yeah, cool, I need to hang up. No, no, um, <laughs> it gets to our midfield and they can't keep the ball. Like they, it, it felt like in the first 10 games, they would, they would receive the ball and they, they would, be, they would be stronger. Mm. And, um, be able to get, get turned and make a pass better and now it seems so frantic it seems like they get it and they just need to go as fast as possible because it's so under pressure and it's just like just by just by the finest margin we get to the front line and maybe it just maybe reaches son or whatever it's not as controlled as it was in the beginning mm. um and i felt like i was at the luton game right and um what i saw then um when we were, when we actually just lobbed it long over the top of them and Son ran onto it, or Vern, or uh, Vern ran onto it, or whoever on the wings was going onto Kulu at one point. We were getting so much more joy. Then, mm -hmm. um, and what we've been doing is when we get to counter attacks now, is we just slow it down every time. My cat is trying to get into my ashtray. <laughs> um, every time we get, it's so frustrating because every time we get counter attacks now, we um, we seem to just slow it down, and it's yeah. so frustrating. Whereas we used to, um, even under Conte, we would get counter attacks for the whole thing because Son's pace, we're not exploiting it. Um, if we, we we used to just get counter attacks instantly direct straight straight into mm. the counter. Now we're so frustrating. So it goes to one person, then they just suddenly stop, allow everyone to reset. Then like yesterday, they get into a low block, like the yeah. other teams do this. And then of course we can't we struggle against low block. And when they set they set up centrally, we can't we're trying to go break them down with all this intricate stuff centrally, and it doesn't work because there's yeah. just every single man is there. And yeah. in, 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 even if you're Lionel Messi, you're going to struggle to do to break through defenses like that. And so then. And so then we, we, we have to resort to the wing. Sorry, I'm rambling so much. No, 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 I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's wonderful. Oh. Yeah. Then we have to, then of course, what happens last night and what happens in other games, we're forced to go to the wide, to the wings and to players like, and, and to do these side ins and yeah. across the line. That's what we're essentially forced to do because we can't pass it through centrally and do all this stuff 90% um, of the time. Um, and, um, and then last night, what we lacked was the, the target man, like a Richie type player in there to tap them in. Um, mm. And what the problem is, lots of people criticizing Son for his performance. But it's, it's not Son's fault, in my opinion, at all. It, for me, it's very simple. You just don't play a player like Son centrally against low blocks, right, where mm. he's where his he's not getting his key thing is his pace and his ability to get turned. Like he's used on the wings and he can cross in from the wings. Mm. He's just not that player that has the strength. Or he's not like Harry Kane who could hold off two or three players and you know create stuff or do yeah. something on his own. Like he just needs he needs a little space and time to make get a shot away and stuff. That's just who he is. It's fine. Mm. But um, a player, that, yeah. Just, just just on that quickly. I mean, there's a few things you said that I completely agree with. I, mean, I think we're one dimensional at this moment in time. I think you know it's it's quick quick and you know it's easy to read. Get the ball out to you, to your wingers. 
you know, Johnson Varner, mad pace, get the one-on-one with the fullback, drive by, put a crawl across the six-yard box. He's looking for direct wingers. I'm okay with that. But you need the other pieces of the party to come, you know, the likes of Madison. Like, I feel at times, you know, it took Madison 35 minutes to realise he actually has the ability to pick up the ball and put a, beat, beat yeah. a player with the pass into Johnson's feet. And then he'd done it one more time after that. But someone like Madison should be doing that every game, getting on the ball, getting his head up. Werner, boom. Johnson, boom. He doesn't do it enough. It's, you know, he goes hiding, which doesn't help us, and it does make us look like one-dimensional. Yeah. One thing that really irks me in years gone, in, in games gone by is, you mentioned it there, when we have teams where we've caught them with players up the pitch, we slow it down and allow them to get back and get reset. That happened a couple of times against West Ham last night, and I was absolutely furious with it. And it's not just one player that's guilty of this. There's a number of players that are guilty of this. You know, we allow them to reset and make ourselves have to play through all 11 men again. There was one stage last night, West Ham had six players upfield. We were on the back four. Go. We held it back, let them get reset. You know, they're the moments where you can add a second goal, kill them off and stuff like that. We didn't do it. And then when it comes to Son as well, I agree with you on, on in terms of last night isn't all on Sonny it, 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 to yeah. a degree, you know. And sh- should have had the foresight. I mean, I was saying it two days before the game. You will not get away with playing Son up striker. Now, if a fit, little fat Irish guy like me from Ireland could foresee the problems... The analyst, all the guys in the backroom team, you know, Ange Poster Cognum and stuff, how could they not see that? That's where I get frustrated. But even when you do get it, or even if you do go with it and you get it wrong, make that change early. He didn't do it. Where I do blame Son is he knows he is the leader of this team, especially in the forward area. He has to stay a lot more disciplined. He got frustrated last night. He started coming out. There's one stage Madison was running forward with the ball. He ran into him. A yeah. couple of times Johnson was running with the ball down the right-hand side. He ran into him. Mm. <coughs> Son was asked to play striker last night. Look, I'm one of these. I've been saying it since the start of the summer. You're not going to get away with it all season. You need to bring in another striker here to compete with Richardson. Son is not the answer and stuff like that. But Son also needs to understand if he's that leader, he's the experienced head in the group. He knows he, he used to fit in there when Harry Kane didn't. He yeah. knows. You've got to sit on the edge of the, of the shoulder of the defender when them balls are coming across and launch yourself into the six-yard box. Every ball that went in there, if people go back and look at them, some standing back here, sometimes out of the area, nowhere near good enough, coming out, taking up spaces for other people to play in, not good enough. He, he was doing that last night, wasn't he? He was more disciplined role last night for me, I thought. But last but night was I did it. It was born out of frustration. As, last night it was frustrating, wasn't it? Because I think he's almost was going into his old wing mentality because he wouldn't he wouldn't take up the central spot. He was hanging just on the edge, yeah, on the, on the like on the right side or left side at each time, and not actually going into into like the middle area where where the forward would needed to be to be yeah to, to be the target for for for, for those crosses and, and everything. Yeah, so it was frustrating. And um, again, I think that was a symptom of. West Ham frustrating us in those central areas. Like we just mm. couldn't get anything done centrally, mm. and and uh, you know this emphasis on that it was just and yeah, it, and again <laughs> and it, it's sad, it's sad to say, but it, that is a criticism, a criticism of Ange, even though I'm a big backer of Ange, mm. and I'm still sticking by what I've always said since mm. the beginning. Um, is that his first season's a free hit, so I'm not gonna mm. like ever get on his back or anything. But I will critique when I think there's a critique mm. to be had, and I think I haven't critiqued him properly the whole season up until recently now mm. where it's like where it's like bring on Richard earlier notice how this is work how this is playing just at least let them like give them instruction just do, do a few long balls like like do do a couple of counter-attack quick long balls it's okay like we can break the rules sometimes we can do something like if it's going to work like, mm. I for me for me I'm a bit torn I do get what you're saying for me I'd like to see a bit more variety in attack I think if we had a number six with that passing range look some people would argue Basuma has it. I just don't see it. He never puts it on display. He could yeah. progress that ball quicker. When when Madison and whoever else is in the midfield with him are coming to the ball, looking for it, and they're drawing players towards them. Yeah. You seen Romero do it a couple of times last night. He bypassed the midfield straight into one of the forward lines or straight over to a doji who was in behind the West Ham yeah. press and stuff like that. We need more players with that passing ability. But if you had a player in that number six who could get the ball out, first thing, look up. Can you play Johnson, Werner, or Son in behind with that one pass? If it's not on, you know, look, then, then then you reassess. But we don't have that guy in the number six. Madison is not unlocking the door despite him, you know, us buying him four to do that. And I think 
they're, they're little areas where maybe we need to look at in the summer in terms of creativity. Because I'm with you. I think there's a lot of good that Andrew's done. He de- he's getting us into the final third. He's got us into a position where we're dominating possession, where we could barely keep hold of possession last season. You know, yeah. there's a lot of good here, but I just think it's the final few bits that are missing. But I also think first 10 games of the season, his guys who he thinks is his best players were all on it. They were so on it. That's the thing. Now That's what. And now, now they're not. A bit of a loss and because two of the key want to change. Who are the key ones that are not mm. on it? Is Madison and Basuma two of the very yeah. key ones? Because Son's not not on it. Son's just been played at, in the different positions at the wrong, at the wrong times. Yeah. But not even Son's not even out of foot. Son's fine for me. Son's just not. Anyway, it's Madison and Basuma the key, 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 key yeah. ones. Um, because those were so important to the midfield, which is where we're falling down. Because. And we can have we can have questions about defending and all this stuff, but I think for me, most of our, why we're losing, why we're conceding goals is coming from losing the ball up in midfield, and because yeah. we're not controlling it like we did in the first ten games. Where in the first ten games we were doing really well, our defense was great in the first ten games. Um, but for me, but if we're going to be so high up, it's just basic, isn't it? It's just basic football stuff. If you're going to be yeah. that high up and you're going to lose the ball all the time, it's just going to keep coming back. You're going to keep getting overrun. And no matter if you're the greatest defenders like Vicario, so fast and all that, no matter who you are, you're going to get caught eventually. And like, and to their credit, they didn't get caught last night. They only got caught from a set piece last night. But mm. we've conceded more goals than when we had um, Dyer and Sanchez. So, do you, um, look, do you know what on that for me? I'd argue, I, I do get that, right? But you also have to remember the whole system was to last in the years gone by was to protect that back line. Mm. If they were playing this system, it, it, you oh, know, we're dead. It yeah, be, <laughs> it <would be> night <laughs> and day. The guys would have conceded yeah, yeah. half of what the others would. Yeah, so, we'd be down the other side of the table. Although I understand what people are saying when it comes to that, you know yeah. what they don't talk about is the difference of systems. We played yeah, yeah. eleven men behind the ball and they still conceded yeah. that amount of goals. Yes, true. Now true, we true. play two men left back there, and true, true. you know, so it sort of does show an improvement in that regard. For me, I think the biggest problem is is we're actually too safe in possession. Yeah. For me, if we look to That's maybe the point. put, put the point. because with, with, with a lot of our passing up in the forward area, it's all great keeping possession. And I understand that it's to you know limit the amount of times you can get countered on. But because we don't take enough risks with it, we get countered regularly because we you know teams are just putting us into one corner, going to turn the ball over and going quickly. Yeah. If we took more risks, take shots. You know, you get deflections, you get blocks, you know, people won't catch everything, you know, you know, corners and stuff like that. And yeah. you put the door down, like you're supposed to do with possession, try different things, not the same thing every single time. Which is ironic. You, you actually, is, funny enough, would not get countered as much as we do. But it's ironic because Andrew's system is meant to, it's meant to be about taking risks, but we seem to be a bit scared. And, and I think that's down to the players more than this. I think it's Andrew. I think that's... um. Mm. That's more than the players don't see. The players in the beginning of the first ten games were really on it, like you said. Everyone seems so on it, and now there seems to be some doubt creep, creeping into some of them. Belief. Vicario yeah. didn't mention that after the game. Yeah, didn't he? yeah. And Vicario is one I want to talk about a, a little bit because mm. I do like him still, but he has got, I think, some issues um, with control of his area. Um, yeah. If if um, also knowing when to grab a ball. Like sometimes I think there is times when he could catch balls that he's just punching away, and I don't, and it looks I, like he was playing volleyball last yeah. night. Like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> like that. Do you know what? Pro- just on that, Phoenix, quickly. If yeah. that was over here, you would not get away with it because over here there's a sport called Gaelic football. Right. A lot of it is, you know, kicking out your hands and getting up and catching it. Mm. You know, you see players in Gaelic football right. all the time going up like that, one knee in front of them. You know, under pressure, claiming <laughs> the ball. I don't understand how a goalkeeper can't goalkeeper do it. Can't do it. And I don't understand why clubs don't have some Gaelic footballers in there yeah. working with goalkeepers coming out and claiming the ball while catching it instead of having to punch it. Because they're meant to train goalkeepers are, are, are renowned for training exceptionally hard, like much mm-hmm. harder than people would think that they do. They're like one of the hardest trainers. They have horrible, horrible training regimes. Like they should have extreme, crazy core strength. They should have, you know, um, this should be. Normal stuff because cor- corners when they're that close in there in the box should always just be the keepers. Should, it should be boring. It the keepers should just be catching them all the time. Like if they're a good keeper, the ninety percent of the time, a ball comes into his sort of area. He should be above everyone and he's got it. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It shouldn't be so easy just to shove him off and or or it to go past him mm. and to some and zoom ahead. It's it or if he can't if he hasn't got the strength, then his defenders need to help him. Like that, there has to be a solution to this because teams are clearly targeting him. 
clearly do you know don't. what though, Felix? I don't know about you. I felt like you know, I do get this argument bringing over someone. You know, it's it happens a lot in Sunday League. Anyone that's played Sunday League, you know, you bring over you bring over a defender to sort of get that player, push him off the goalkeeper. You you sort of push forward onto him, lean into him, and sort of push away from the goalkeeper. Yeah. But it also, like you know, Vicario doesn't have to barge through Antonio. He can take two steps back, realizing the danger. Take a step to the side. Mm-hmm. Which frees him up to come and take the ball. For me, yeah. I felt like he was way too happy to stay behind Antonio yesterday. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the keeper has gets to use his arms. So you don't actually have to yeah. use all your strength around him. You just have to get your arms up in front of them above. That's you get your arms in the position yeah. that you catch it. It doesn't it doesn't you don't have to be Superman, you just have to be positionally aware and mm. and and that's about it. About and obviously practice that and be good at it. Um mm. so for me he, it, that needs to be worked on. Because it is an issue. Uh, that teams it's targeting. cost us a few times this it's season, though, hasn't it? You know, Man City in the FA Cup, everything. I think there was another game in there as well, yeah. somewhere along the line, and last night. But it cost know. us two points last night, essentially, didn't mm. it? Really? Yeah. Because if, if I mean, all those problems we're talking about attacks and all that stuff. Um, but regardless, if we hadn't let that goal in, we would have won one nil. Look, maybe um, I'm just a bit old-fashioned in that regard, Felix. But I, you know, I do get the questions around the defending from set pieces. I get that. But when it's in your six-yard box, I mean, I grew up in an era where the goalkeeper is told, that's yours. No one, you, no exactly. one out, out muscles you, out physical, out jumps you in that area. That is your area. You come and take man and ball. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a bit old school. Maybe you're not allowed to do that anymore. But for me, you know, we can look at the back line. But when it's in the six-yard box and it's curled in like that and you've got players running at you and you're jumping from a static position, that has to be your goalkeeper has all to. day long. It just has to. That's I'm agree. That's the school of thought I've come from, Dave, as well. Always have, always because I'm. That's all I ever remember seeing. Like yeah. I remember back in the day, seeing corners, like it was like clockwork. It was boring to watch because yeah. if they, if yeah. they shot. A, it, do you know what I mean? Because if they shot a yeah. corner that were too near the post, or whatever. Near the goalkeeper, yeah, yeah, you just knew it was just. It was just like right. Well, that's done. And because we used to do, we were criminal. We used to do. Remember those season, a couple of seasons. All we ever did was near <laughs> near yeah. post corners, wasn't yeah. it? That's all we Wonder did. I- <laughs> For like two or three oh, seasons, it was it was so funny, awful. But I feel like um, yeah, that we need to work that out. We need to sort that out. Um, and um, so uh, yeah, I mean that's what that's that's one of the major issues. And the in terms of defending, I don't. It's weird because the defenders themselves, Odogi, Poro, Van de Ven, and, and Romero, on paper, are great defenders. And they and I think if we play our system better with the midfield. Mm. We, they will be. We will better have a better record because I don't think it's mm. them per se. Like, um, but I just also think of again if we kill teams off more, it, it takes mm. away their momentum, their belief in the game as well. You know what I mean? There's there's contributing factors to you. I actually agree with you. I don't think the problem is the back line. I think Vicario one on one is absolutely exceptional. By the yeah, way. he's I'm great right shot stopper. Amazing. I mean, I when they shot those two shots. The midfield yeah. at has been all over the place in terms of the amount of space they're allowing opposition to play in. And in the forward line, again, like I said, you kill teams off, you change the opposition's belief and stuff. There's like they're the contributing factors to me, I, I think, when it when I look yeah. at that into record. Well, this is the thing. So it's still Andrew's first season, and it'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see what he does in the summer. Because I really am going to be interested. And I'm be interested to see if it's what he does or if it's what he slash levy does. Mm-hmm. Because Mm-hmm. I'm very like I'm still <laughs> I'm not tr- I'm, I'm not a fool to trust Levy yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm very very skeptical I'm, and I'm worried as well because I, I like Ange I want him to do well and I'm just scared that Levy will levy him again yeah. and it will do the same old story because we've literally been here so many times we're excited about the manager let's believe in something da, 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 da. Yeah. give him a time let's give him a, uh, everything we all know the the we all know what it is and uh, yeah goals win matches. And it's true. And I, and there was another point that people were making that we we scored only one less than City. And that's true. So that's great. But we can still score more. Um, City are having one of the worst seasons they've had in that many years, though. But exactly, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, Liverpool we, having one of yeah. the worst seasons they've had. In, well, not well, exactly. actually, they're probably having one of their better seasons, to be fair, you know. But, you know, City, if you were comparing ourselves to City, they're having one of the worst seasons they've had in a long time. Despite yeah. still being in the title race. Regardless, it, Regardless of if we're comparing ourselves to them or not, I think we can still get more goals in this system mm. if we just exploit some more of our abilities that we have that we're not. Uh, I don't think we're exploiting. And that's just a slight criticism on Ange. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. Maybe his system, which I hope he does. But and um, 
and it's only a slight difference. I just think mm. there's things there that we can we can exploit um, better. Mm. Um, no, look, I completely agree with you. I think, but look, like you said, you, I mean, you know, you sort of said it yourself. You know, it's a process this year and stuff like that. You know, but I think the good things is coming out of this season is we know the areas that need to be worked on. You know, we know the areas that need to be improved. It's not like we're going to go into mm. next season under a new manager, you play a few games and then you realise all the areas that need to be improved and this player that did suit that system now doesn't suit this system. We also, have an, we also have an identity now that we exactly that clear philosophy. We, we know what types of players we want, the calibre, yeah. instead of just like a sort of <laughs> winging yeah. every single time. Yeah, oh, exactly. he, he looks all right. <laughs> I don't know, I'll get him in. Oh, and look, a, this, this is the thing. I understand a lot of the fans' frustrations. You know, I understand them. But bringing in a new manager and going a new different direction for me is not the answer. We've no. tried that three, four years We've and look where stick it, with someone. progressively it was getting worse, you know? We've got to stick with someone. I know it, yeah. even if he's not every, even if the manager, I think Angie is a lot of people's cup of tea, but let's say he, even if he wasn't everyone's cup of tea, we've got to stick with something. Even if it, we've, got to, we've got to just stick to something yeah. because we haven't for so long. And teams that the best, the best club, all the best clubs have a philosophy, first and foremost, a philosophy that they stick to, whether it's a defensive team, yeah. attacking team, a whatever, tick attacker, this, that, gig and press, whatever, the, whatever it is, they have a philosophy and they stick to it, right? Yeah. Also, if anyone wants to know about this white AIA. I actually I, think it looks better like that personally. Oh, I love it. Do you know what? I did it by accident, right? And so if anyone wants to know how to do it, if you want to take a risk, it's the white one. I think this is actually an elite shirt though. So, I, so anyone who doesn't like yeah, playing for the shirt, the risk the elite shirt but... <laughs> but I did it. But I don't. Don't ask me what the hell I was thinking. I think I put my whites in together, and because I do, I think I think that's what happened. I put it in with my whites without realizing, and I put it on a sixty degree stain wash. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. a high spin, and I like the idea that it was it was a stain wash that took out that red stain, you know. And, it's not and better I, like that. Oh, oh mate, it, they should make the shirts like this, in my opinion. Like, yeah, AIA yeah, 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 won't have it because it doesn't stand out enough. Yeah. But for us Spurs fans who don't want red on it, I think it's yeah. absolutely beautiful. It was beautiful, mate. When I took it out of the washing machine, I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I would have been confused for a minute. I would have been like, oh, what have I done? But then I would not actually like it. I was but scared for a second, but then I, in, but luckily these are... Am I going? I, if I can. I haven't, I haven't got tickets or anything, but I might, might I go. I mean, yeah, I would love to. If you do get a hold of one, let me know. I'll be down there. I'd love to meet you. Are you, going, are you going to be down, yeah? I'll be over. Well, if the game's on a Sunday, I'll be over. If they move it to Saturday, I ain't giving the airline any more of my money for free. Oh, right. so. so if it's on Saturday or Sunday, you said if you're coming up. If it's on Saturday, I won't be going. If it's on Sunday, I will be going. Okay. Well, I'll try, I'm going to try to get some tickets then, man, if I can. Yeah, let I think me know. The best way, it would be the, I think the best way is through third parties mm -hmm. because third party websites because mm. they make it such a nightmare on the website if you're not the only right. thing is though it can be a rip off on the entire party websites mm. can't they that's the thing that's yeah. the thing but look Felix we'll, we'll let you go my man I really appreciate you coming on great chat appreciate by it. the way you know, I, yeah. really, I really enjoyed that conversation you know you covered a lot there so thank you very much I always love chatting with you Dave and congrats on 14k man been watching since the beginning you're the greatest yeah. you're the Here's to another 14k coming up for you, Ben. Oh, look, I appreciate it. I never thought I'd get to 14k. I never thought I'd grow up, <laughs> you know, get past 5k. So you never know. We'll wait and see. But look, again, thank you for your contribution. You know, you've got to make it more of a regular habit getting on. This I know, show. I know. I've just been you working all the out. time, mate. It's, it's just my time. It's just the times, yeah. you know, because I work quite late. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's not always easy to get How on. I got your number. Uh, I don't think so. Should I email? I got. I'll send you an email on it. I think number. I said email. I might have emailed it to you once, but I'll send it to you anyway. I'll send it. Yeah, to send you. it to me again, lad. Email right. me there now. Sweet mate, I will do. Have a good evening. You too, man. Come with me, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Everyone, right. big up, big up, Bob Bean Counter Felix. I just after thinking about it, got a bit of the dragon thing going on there. I'm not gonna lie, he probably has the, you know, the right, the right person to pull it off. So big up, um, um. Uh, Felix on that but look we are going on to the la last guest of the evening and it is Big T. Tyler how are you keeping sir? I'm doing good Dave how are you? Yeah I'm doing all right my man I'm doing all right I would have been better if we got the three points last night but uh, yeah, I don't know I, I, I sort of think there's a lot of overreaction to the result last night too though Tyler. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm sure I'm one of them I like to overreact right away. Let's <laughs> go on what, what's your opinion? 
No, 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 I just I was just frustrated in the moment. Obviously, I I, mm. I just oh, I can't stand when we switch off defensively on set pieces. It's so annoying. Like seeing four people just watching Zuma come into the ball and just have a free header is so frustrating. Yeah. Um, but no, every I'm I'm actually a little bit annoyed right now, actually, because literally what? everything you and Felix just discussed was the exact things I was gonna say, and you guys already said it perfectly. Oh. So. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was gonna bring out Vicario and not well, come out to get the ball. Well, look, give us your opinion on You know, tell us, tell us your thoughts on it. No, yeah, he's an incredible goalkeeper. He's he's probably the best shot stopper in the league. Um, but he has to com command that six yard box. I mean, you have to come up and come out and catch the ball, or at least punch it. And then sometimes when he does come out and punch punch it, he scuffs it bad. So mm. that's why he gets nervous. And he's got four guys around him. He's they figured it out. City City was really the ones that started that. They had Ruben Diaz just shoving him the entire game. And after that, every other team is focused on, in on that and just uh, have been putting balls right in there on top of them. And we can't we can't handle it. So we really got to figure that out. Um, is that a set piece, Coach? Is that an individual problem? I mean, who, who do you – you know, if carry all – like, look, I, I agree with what you're saying about Vicario. Is that something he needs to sort of register himself? Is that something that he needs to be told by someone in and around him? I mean, what's your thoughts? I don't know. I think it's more of like a mental thing with him. I th there's there's no way people are – there's no way we have a coach telling him just sit back on your line and yeah. watch, you know. Yeah. They're, they're, I'm sure they're telling him to go out and catch the ball or pu punch it away. Um, I think it's just a mental thing because he did it earlier in the game and he scuffed it, if you remember. Hmm. Before they scored that set piece, he had went out and it almost looked like he tried to one-hand catch it or something. It was like really weird and it just dropped right to the floor. Um, luckily, we cleared it out. but And then the I think it was the next set piece after that. Zuma had that free header and he just stood on his line. Um, but yeah, that, that part... Cause, as you guys were even just saying, the defense as a whole is is phenomenal. I love our defense right now. It's if and if you guys if people do get behind us, we clean it up. It, it's hard to get behind us, but when they do, we got Van de Ven, we got Romero, we got a Dogie, or just bully them off the ball, yeah. and running running back slide tackles perfect. I mean, they did a phenomenal job on Antonio yesterday. Um, yeah. He had that one chance where he got in behind, which Madison obviously had gotten fouled. And even if you want to call that a foul when Antonio kind of pulled Vandevin back and Vandevin fell on the edge of the box there. Um, so I think regardless... Yeah, I still saved it anyway, which is great. Oh, phenomenal. I mean, he's he's incredible on the shot yeah. stop, right? Yeah. Um, you saw that in that Chelsea game where he stopped like 10 one-on-ones. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah, was crazy. Yeah. Do you know what? It's weird because I absolutely love the guy. I just, from set pieces, he makes me nervous. He really does. And it's... Yeah. Uh, look, I suppose it's something where, where the defenders are just going to have to help him out if that is his weakness, you know, start going for the ball. Because there's been, again, you know, I think Mickey van der Ven was the only one that jumped. Now, he missed time that yeah. jump. You know, Kurt Zuma went on challenge, which is embarrassing. I mean, absolutely embarrassing. I, I'm absolutely sick of it, you know. Yeah. For me, I just want to see players, you know. And, and what, what infuriates me actually as well, Tyler, is every fan knew coming into this game, yep. set pieces, just stay switched on. Outside of that, West Ham will not cause you too much problems. 100%. Don't switch off. And I just, it's just so infuriating. It's the only part of the game where they had to stay switched on against West Ham and they switch off. Yeah, like the result as a whole, we, I mean, we didn't have play a terrible game. Yeah, in the final third, we just couldn't get it done, right? But mm. we got that goal early. We should have, we should have been able to win that game 1 0. Yeah. They should have never scored. The only way they were going to score, as you said, was the set piece. That's all they can do. We, our defense is too good. Our midfielders are too good for them. They're not gonna. They're not gonna create on us, mm. and that's why I was so pissed off yesterday. Because it's we we beat ourselves. We yeah, beat ourselves, Dave. And people and I, and some people try to say you got to give credit to West Ham. They played like shit. They. Yeah. I mean, we didn't play great, but they played like shit, and they got a result. Yeah. And that's four points against us this season. So that, oh. it's it, that's really frustrating. I think you've hit the nail on the head there when you said we we beat ourselves last night. And look, of course we didn't we, we didn't we didn't we didn't lose, but we you know yeah. we, we, you know we we gave away the point last night. And for me, when I actually take that saying that you just said there, which I think is spot on in reflection of last night, there's been a lot of games where I feel like that where we've beat ourselves. Yep. There's only very few times where we've actually been played off the park, the likes of Brighton, the likes of Fulham and stuff. 
But there hasn't mm. been too many times we've been playing off the park. It's just we beat ourselves sometimes. I think you're absolutely spot on. Great saying. Yeah, and to go back to that one set piece we can see, I saw a lot of people blaming Basuma because he ended up being the closest to it. But he had, he was guarding someone that was on top of Vicario. So he was, he had taken him out of the play and still almost – he was the closest one that ended up to, to yeah. us, Kurt Zuma. So uh, I don't want to see anything towards Basuma look, on that set piece. Look, the way I see it, people can blame Basuma and stuff like that. But from set pieces – it's really your center halves and your goalkeeper that you are looking at to come and deal with them. Command your area, you know, fight, fight for your area, you know, show me how bad you want to keep a clean sheet and stuff like that. You like, you know, yeah. that's why I struggle to sort of blame the likes of midfielders or strikers if they fail to track a runner or stuff like that, because that can happen. When the ball swung into your six yard box, it's, I mean, it's literally your center backs who is supposed to be their bread and butter. Go and win it. Goalkeeper, come out and claim it. Um, for me, I think it's incredibly harsh to blame Basuma. Uh, yeah, and no. anyway, I question if it is Basuma's fault, who the fuck thought it'd be a good idea to put him on Kartsuma? And Romero was one of the ones just standing there. He watched yeah. it. So, and I love Romero. I think he's an absolute phenomenal mm-hmm. center back. Um, on the ball yesterday, he he kept doing those little dinks over over the guy pressing. Oh, no, I, was the, I was loving it. Uh, it was beautiful. Um, is that not something you think our number six, like someone like Basuma, should have in his locker because we don't see it enough? Yeah, and y- you know, you know who we saw it from last more, more specifically last year, especially in that Milan game. Uh, Sar was actually doing a really good job yeah. of skipping the midfield and getting that ball into the attackers. We yeah. haven't seen as much this year from him because I, I don't know, he's just playing a little bit more. I don't know if it's higher up or if he's being told to pass more sideways to get the possession going, but we ne- we need to skip the midfield sometimes and get that ball into the attack. And and we saw early in that game, Werner was, I mean, Kufal couldn't do anything. He looked like an absolute moron against Werner. And, yeah. all, and we just stopped. We, we stopped attacking him. Why, I, I don't know why. We just stopped attacking mm-hmm. him. Is that to do with Werner? Is that to do with West Ham getting more bodies over to not leave him as exposed? I mean, I struggle to identify why. But I will say, when Werner did get the ball in the second half, he purposely stopped going at him. He kept on coming back with the ball and laying it back inside. So it's hard to know why why he stopped when he had him on absolute toast. Yeah, and and, and I love Ange, but... I think I think he really did lose lose us that game uh, with the substitutions. I mean, wait until the 70th minute. You saw what happened against Luton. We made those early subs. We made a change at halftime. We changed that game around. Um, I, and to him not to make subs until the 70th minute, and then keep Werner on the pitch, who literally he literally contributed absolutely nothing to that second half. Yeah. And, and I thought he I thought he was really good in the first half. I I was really happy with him. And then for I can't him to... understand the logic of how he, how long he lasted on the, especially in that second half. I can't get my head around it. Yeah. And then you bring in Kulu and Sar. Is there something still like messed up with Richie? Is he that injured still? He can only play ten minutes. I mean, he's he's got to get on that pitch earlier. Son was not cutting at his striker. I was getting frustrated with Son because his t- touch was a little bit poor. But the thing that was frustrating me. He just has refused to take shots outside the box this year. He, he's had space so many times. He's just not taking his normal shots. That's his best shots. And we need we need our striker. We need our best finisher to be taking shots. Is that lack of confidence or is that instructions from, from management? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's just... I think he's he's just got so much pressure on him to perform right now because he's re- really one of our only, like, good finishers, our top goal scorer. And I I, th- I think, I don't know, I don't, and maybe it's just the pressure he's getting to him a little bit. I mean, he's got so much on his shoulders to perform. He's the captain. Um, when he doesn't when he doesn't take over a game, it's it's hard for the rest of our team to. Do you want me to be brutally honest? I, I, I just think he struggles because no one else is on his wavelength in terms of speed yeah. and ideas and yeah. stuff like that. Um, he had Harry Kane in years gone by, and we were actually good enough. In fact, it didn't matter who played on the right hand side; we were good enough to get by with just them two alone. And I think Son is searching for that guy where he can have that link up play with that sort of telepathic, but also a guy that's good enough and is, can think as quickly as Son. I think he's really missing that in the forward line. Yeah, and he had that in the beginning of the season. Madison was absolutely superb. They were linking up, you know, almost every game. I mean, they were looking very strong. 
Madison hasn't been going down that that line and getting a ball into Sun in the box that he was doing in the first 10 games. He hasn't been doing that. I don't know if it's that injury that's causing him not to run up the pitch more, but I, I think at times Madison actually looked pretty good in that game, though, yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it was disappointing to see him subbed off. Again, I don't know if it's, that's that injury thing, saving him for Forrest, but we needed those points. And I, I would have rather risked, you know, if you want to, rest Madison for the Forest game, just bring him on at halftime. Then if you wanted to do that, let him play this whole game out. Mm. Look, I'm of that opinion. For me, forget about the Forest game on Sunday. You yeah. do with what's in front of you. You know, for me, you, you play Madison to the 90. That's why you brought him in here, to unlock teams like that. And if needs be, you take him off early against Forest, you know, but you deal with the game in front of you. Um, are you disappointed your boy uh, Lissasso didn't get more minutes yesterday to affect the game? Because I'll give it to you, he actually done all right against Luton when he came off the bench. Yeah, I mean, and he he got the four he got the four added minutes in yesterday's game, so you can't really. I mean, right. and, and even Richie, you can't really judge anything off of what he did. I mean, he he only had about twelve minutes or whatever it was. That's the thing, right? I'm not Lestasso's biggest fan, but what does anyone expect the guy to do in four minutes? Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense, especially a midfielder. It, it's hard for a midfielder to get into the game if you, like, as a late sub. It is very hard for them to get into the game. They need a couple passes first to to get going, which was actually a little bit shocking because right when Kulu was brought on, he created that chance immediately when he came on the pitch, and then after that, he did absolutely nothing. Um, I think he got it to Johnson. Jo- Johnson's got to shoot some of those that he he's getting on. Um, Inside the box where he's cro- his crossing was phenomenal though yesterday. I I thought Johnson had a really good game, and we were begging for a guy like Richarlison to get in on the end of one of those crosses. Mm-hmm. Werner was just sitting there not attacking the ball. Sun Sun was sitting more on the edge of the box waiting for the cut back. Johnson put about four crosses in that no that were really good crosses that no one got a foot onto. Um, I thought he had a phenomenal game again. And, mm. I, I again, I wouldn't have started Johnson, so I, I definitely got to give credit to Ange there. I yeah. think he had a really good game. Um, Look, I think I think Ange made the right call in Johnson. I think he made the right call in Bentecourt as well, believe, despite my thoughts on dropping Sarah and that. I just think the forward line is where he got it completely wrong. I could already foresee it not working out. And, I could, and the fact that he left it so long to change it, I just, it's, I, it, I, it's, it's beyond belief. I just I I think he got the forward line right to start the game. I I, I thought I thought we were playing good. I I, I, I especially because if Richarlison's injured, you obviously don't want to start him right now. Mm-hmm. But at halftime or in the 50, 50th minute, fifty fifth minute, sixtieth minute, that had to have been changed. Mm-hmm. You cannot wait till the seventieth minute. It, it gave yeah. it gave him way too much time for West Ham to get comfortable, yeah. and they did. And they saw out the game. So. And yeah. again, against Luton, we made that early sub at halftime, and we changed that game around. Yeah. So it was disappointing for, to see him not learn from that Luton game, and to just wait for his substitutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> disappointing, but look, we roll on to Forest at the weekend, Tyler. Hopefully, you know, we put three points on the board there. You're looking at seven points out of three yeah. games. Probably doesn't look as bad as we feel today. So let's. Let's wait and see what happens there. But anything else you want to cover before I let you go, my man? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Um, for the Forest game, I'm a little bit nervous because my boy Gio Reyna. I know they haven't been playing him He's much, a but player. I like him. I have a feeling that for some reason they're gonna get him into that game, and I'm gonna be really scared seeing him create against us because I I absolutely love him. I think he's phenomenal. Do you know what probably shows my age, Tyler. I remember he's out playing. He used to play in the Bundesliga. Yeah, uh, he, he was a great player. player. He used to have long hair, sort of long hair, and all. He used to he used to like watching him play. He was a very good player, actually. He was. He's bad. Yeah. You've got so, some good players coming through, though. United States of America. You got some very good players coming through. I really like Robinson at Fulham, by the way. I really like him. I was impressed with yeah Tyler Adams at the World Cup. The amount of work that he gets through and stuff like that. I think if you just had one or two more players, maybe in the forward line, that were a bit more clinical, you'd be a very good team. Yeah, and I, I love Tyler Adams. I'd love to have a six like him, but the only problem with him is his his passing as well. We need we need a deep line playmaker, and mm. it's his passing where it let, lets him down, but. He's an absolute work, worker, workhorse in that midfield. Yeah. He's phenomenal. Um, but I, I love for America, an American to come to Tottenham. We're getting some better players now, so I see. Well, we used to have them. We used to have Casey Keller, Friedel. I mean, who else? We had Dempsey. Yeah. Was it Dempsey? 
Dempsey, yeah. Clint Dempsey, yeah. We had a few in our time. Yedlin, you know, we've had a few. I oh, like yeah, that. Man. I want to get an Irish guy back at Tottenham as well, you know. Yeah, I know that that right wing back or right wing, whatever. I, I forgot his name that you were talking about the other day, the young Irishman. Who oh, Ebersele. Yeah. Have you seen have you seen have you seen, have you seen highlights of him and stuff? No, I've yet, I've yet to see anything of him, but the way you're describing him, if he's anything like a dogie, if we can have him on that right right side, I don't I don't see anybody ever getting in behind us or. Go I mean, look into compilation reels on YouTube when you finished here, right? Just watch one, and you'll see exactly what I mean when I say a dogie, but on the right hand side. But what I will say, and I'm warning people, if he's being brought in here as a right winger, yeah, forget about it. He is nowhere near good enough in the final third as a winger on a consistent basis. He comes off the bench and plays there for Ireland, and he can't even beat his man. So, you know, for me, yeah. don't play him there. He is much better when he's running at the ball from deep like a doji, you know, and stuff. But defensively, trust me. Anyway, just go and watch him on YouTube, type in Festi Ebersele, and you'll get a good compilation with him. Now, obviously, with them, you don't get the bad parts. So once you've watched that, come and text me, and I'll tell yeah. you the bad parts. For sure, I'll, che I'll check that out yeah. for sure. And if you've any sort of up-and-coming American guys, you know, feel free to send them on to me as well, Tyler. All right, I'll let you know. Do, do. Uh, but look, you go and have a good evening, my man. Oh, actually, by the way, you're back playing tennis now? Yeah, I'm I'm fully healthy. Back in tournament? I look yeah, actually, I actually won a tournament about two weeks ago. Oh, you did not, did you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm back on the court. I'm enjoying it. Back in the gym every day. So, have you the watched hamster... the uh, tennis series on um, Netflix? Hmm? Have you watched the tennis series on Netflix? Oh, uh, no. I, I actually I, I don't enjoy watching tennis. I, yeah, I do. You know? It just doesn't do it for me. Do you know I'm, what? I don't I'm... actually like watching the games, but the, the Netflix do a bite sized documentary following the whole season. It's absolutely okay. brilliant. They've got two, um, two, two, two seasons of it out. I've watched both. They're absolutely brilliant. All right, I'll have to check that out. Did you did you did you end up checking out those thirty for thirties I I told you about about my Miami Miami Hurricanes? Do you know what? I didn't watch the one you told me about. There was a few others though that I came across when I typed in the thirty for thirty that I've watched and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, no. Look, if you come across any other good sport and things for me to watch, please send them on. You know what I like to watch, so send them on to me. Of course, yeah, I love those sport sport documentaries. I think, I've got I think I've got phenomenal. a good one for you. If you uh, type in bunch of amateurs on YouTube. And it follows a, a club from non-league into the football and league pyramid into the lower stages. And the guy who owns the club is also the manager. It's absolutely brilliant. So you should give I, I give that a watch. It's brilliant, Tyler. Hundred uh, percent. Any any stories like that? I mean, they're incredible to watch. So yeah, yeah. No, they're good. They're good. But look, Tyler, you go off and have a good evening, my man, and I'll speak to you again very soon. All right. You as well, Dave. Have a good one, guys. I will have a good one, Big T. See you soon, my man. Later. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Everyone, big up Tyler in the chat. Great conversation with Big Tyler, as always. Just quickly, where is it? James Flower. Um, now, I'm in a bit of a pickle here, right? Because I don't have my phone because it's broken. i got a spare one there that I can use for the night that I'm going to set up after. So, and I've already took the link down. Um, but if I put it up, you're probably going to get a thousand more people in and I'm trying to end uh, so I could go watch the last few minutes of the City and Aston Villa game. Uh, but if you email me, the email is in the description below. I'll send you the link to back to you and we'll get you on for a couple of minutes, James. If you want to come on have your say, no problem in that regard. Just let me know in the comments if that's what you want to do or not. But uh, I believe it's 3 1 City now, which is absolutely brilliant for Tottenham Hotspur. That's great. Brad Matthews doing the job, keeping me up to date in the chat. Absolutely love it. Um, let's go through a few comments. Some people praising Big Tyler in here, which is great to see. They absolutely love Tyler in here. It's great to see that. Great to see that. Sue Smith says, yeah, I'm not looking forward to future games, especially at Anfield. Um, no, of course I don't mind, my man. Just email email uh, the, the email address is in the description below the video. Just email that. I've got my emails open here now. I'll see when the email comes in, and I'll give you the link, and we'll get you on for a couple of minutes. But I will say you are the last guest we're taking, and then I will be ending off on that, James. Just make sure you send me the email there now, lad. Um, Who else have we got in here? We've got Rome Scully says Villa are, are giving uh, Spurs fourth spot, but we're scared to take it. Look, 100%. I think that's my biggest, uh, you know, problem. We've had a couple of opportunities now to really sort of latch our claws into the top four race and take control of it. But 
you know, and we had them opportunities last season as well, and we failed to take them. And I just hope we don't go through the same this season. Hopefully, we, you know, we we, we take this opportunity now. That would be absolutely awesome. Big up, Derek Hutchinson. Really appreciate it. No, Jack Odyssey. Actually, forgot to tell everyone where Jacko was. So, Jacko, he did say yesterday that he's got a bad throat and stuff like that, and it's not too good today. I was on the phone to him earlier. It's not great at all. So, I told him to sit back this evening and relax and rest that throat, you know, so that he can get back because we'll need him now for the next few days, you know, with content and stuff like that. So, that's no Jacko. So, you know, Jacko is a much better at hosting than me, much better at engaging and stuff like that. So, I'm sorry if I've ruined it for anybody in that regard tonight, uh, but big yourselves up. So let's see if I've got the email here from James. Jamesy boy, let me know if you're emailing me, my man. Still waiting on that email. Tyler says, thanks, everyone. Uh, have a good evening. Big up, Tyler, my man. Definitely have a good evening to everybody. Hopefully they have a great evening. Not a good evening, a great evening, Big T. Let's just see if James, Jamesy boy sends me an email. I'll give him another. Uh, yes, he is. Here he is. Right, James, I'm going to send you on the link here, my man. You just click on that link. It'll bring you in, and we'll have a discussion for five or ten minutes, uh, my man. So that should be good. So James will be your last guest of the evening, Mr. Flower. Be good to put a face to the name as well. As 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 always, it is good to put a face to the name. So he's got that link. He will be coming on now. We've got DJ AK. Cheers for having me on, Dave. Just sorting my vinyl out for the big party. Come on, you Spurs. Oh, man, I love the fact that you're a real DJ. I would love it. It's one thing I've always sort of would love to do, you know, and maybe a bit of MCing and stuff like that, but never really had the boss do it. Also, you know, never really sort of, you know, had the conviction behind to go and get, you know, maybe amateur DJ sets and decks and stuff like that. But I love the fact that you're a real DJ and great having you on as well, my man. And uh, make sure you come on again and speak to us again very soon. And then we also, here we go, Jamesy Flower. Let's get him on. Big up, Jamesy boy. How are you keeping my man? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, look, can't complain, can't complain. I'm sort of, I'm in a good mood in general, but still a bit upset with the result last night. <clears throat> yes, it's, I know. I mean, I'm I'm going to play sort of completely opposite side. I'm not upset at all, to be honest. And and, and I know people are saying our oh, Vicario could be better here or midfield could be better there. Got to remember, this is Angie's first season. Mm. We had no pre-season. People were saying things like, oh, look how good Arsenal are at set pieces. It's taken them five years to get to where they are. Mm. Last year, they wasn't good at set pieces. That it's, it's not like well, you can't just drop a whole... When you think, we've got a whole new back four, a new goalkeeper, midfielders, like two new wingers. What do, what do we expect? Mm. Do you, know, do you know what on that, James? I, I actually, I, I agree with you. I know I've made, I've made them points myself. New new goalkeeper in the first day, you know, first time in a decade, new backline and stuff like that. I think I think the majority of people are actually with you that it's Angie's first season and, you know, there is going to be ups and downs. I just think a lot of the reaction in and around game is actually more reactionary to the game. But when, when that sort of fizzles out, I do think a lot of the same people will be saying, look, I do understand it's a project and there will be ups and downs and stuff like that. Um, and I think that maybe gets misconstrued sometimes. But I, I completely agree with you. You know, there is going to be ups and downs in the first season. And I advocate myself. You no, know, I, I actually put, uh, for the first time ever this season, I put blame on Ange last night for maybe not making that Richardson substitution earlier. I think he missed a trick there and stuff like that. But in general, I'm fully behind Ange Postacoglu. I've seen more than enough in terms of he's got us dominating possession. You know, he hasn't been helped by losing Harry Kane this summer. You know, we're all sitting here talking about being more potent and stuff. And hopefully with an addition or two over the summer, we will become a lot more. But I've seen more than enough under Ange Postacoglu for him to be the right guy going into next season. I think, I think you're spot on. I don't think there is enough mention. We lost Harry Kane, our best player in the summer. First, a changing guarding goalkeeper for the first time in a decade. New backline, changing leadership for the first time in a long time in that dressing room. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we just had to instill from a defensive philosophy to an attacking philosophy, get the players to buy in that. He hasn't been helped with injuries, suspensions, you know, the AFCON and, the, uh, and, and Sonny going out to Korea to represent for their nations during you know, a pivotal part of the season where there's a lot of games that come in. I agree with you, you know, and if to, to the card. 
when you take all that into account, I actually think Ange has done a phenomenal job in that regard. And I do think yeah. people miss what he says in the press conference where he's like, you know, the squad isn't fully mine. I'm still looking at every area of the pitch to make it the team more robust, more mobile and stuff like that to get it more to my liking. Um, so I do think people actually, I think a lot of people would agree with what you've just said. I just think a lot of it, you know, is reactionary to the game, James. Yeah. No, no, I agree because we're all the same. I'm the same. You know, when something happens, you're like, well, why is that? Happen? Why didn't this man mark this man? But there's so much to it. And, and let's be honest, Ange has already come out and said that we need to get rid of players. Like there's certain players in here that don't, don't fit. So, and, and all due respect, like you're saying, why didn't he pick Richarlison? What if Richarlison is one of those players? Mm-hmm. Like for me, Lo Celso should be playing. I personally think Lo Celso should be playing. I think he's our best number eight. But if he's one of those players that he doesn't want, mm. you know, I can't expect him to play somebody because behind the door, they could have had a conversation. He said, look, you're not in my plans. Mm. And then go out and play them and drop people like Saar, Benzango, who are in his plans. Because what what vibe does that give out? Mm. Um, and the other thing I, I, I wanted to say is people keep saying, well, like drop the deeper line or we need to change tactics or we need to do X, Y and Z. But from, my, from what I gather from Ange, he's one of those people that he comes into the dressing room and says, right, this is my way. We are going to win if you follow me. So if he said that and everyone's gone, right, I'm going to back this guy. Let's do what this guy says. And then six months later, he goes, right, forget what I said. I need to change my plan. It's not working. I think then people start to go, mm, this man doesn't really know what he's talking about. He came in and told us one thing. Now he's changing his mind. And like, I don't know. I think let's just give the guy some time. Do you know what on that, James? The biggest thing is what you said there. Regardless of what the fans think, the squad will lose complete faith in him if he starts mixing up and changing it. You look at modern yeah. day football, Guardiola has made, you know, little adaptations to his system over the course of a couple of years as he's got the players that he wants to suit. You know, right now, Ange is sort of instilling his philosophy this season and he'll know by the end of the season, right, you can do it over the course of the season, you can. And there may be some players that we love that we might have to let go in order for this to really take shape and stuff like that. Where I actually agree with you is, I I agree, I don't think that Ange Postacoglu should be changing his system whatsoever. I think once you start doing that, you lose faith, you know, the players don't buy into what you're trying to do and you're never really going to get progression. Because one week you could sit back and it helps players out and make them look good, but the next week when you want to go and play on the front foot, they can't do it. It doesn't actually solve a problem in that regard. And I agree with you. For me, I think there's too much made being around, you know, oh, Ange needs to change and stuff like that. We've we've made these mistakes from their own managers in the past other managers need to change it's us that needs to change to help a manager out for once and I'm completely with you in that regard yeah 100% how 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 can we say right this is where he needs to change he needs to do more this he needs to do more that well no because if he's created a style all right I know people say the Scottish League isn't the same as the Premier League no but he still has a certain budget and a certain players and Rangers were dominating that league. So it's not yeah. like he's gone in there and been like, oh, I'm the I'm the superhero. This is easy. He still had to put his philosophy uh, like down to, to things and sort of progress forward. Like the biggest thing we're hearing is uh, we need to improve the defence. We're leaking goals. Mm. My, I'd argue with that and say if Timo Werner scored two or three chances that he could have, we would have been two or three nil up. And then I think the mentality changes. They're like, let's hold on. Let's, let's not get beat more than three or four nil. Mm. Then they don't go forward. You know, yeah. I think there's, I think that we just need to sort of relax a little bit. Mm. For me, look, I actually don't think there's drastic overhaul that needs to happen. I think, look, I, I know Ange didn't want Gio Vio, Gianni Vio to stay around and stuff like that, but. Set pieces has been a big problem long before Ange Postacoglu. And when you look at a lot of the way a lot of the clubs are going, Liverpool, in order to catch City, they also brought specialists in for throw-ins and set pieces and stuff. I think Ange maybe isn't doing him a fa- himself a favour by bringing, you know, not having a set piece coach there to really drill in with the players. But I've seen more than enough in terms of what people were asking for when Conte was here. They wanted a manager that would come in and play the Tottenham way, attack, attack, attack. He does that. Mm-hmm. They wanted a guy that will come in and, and be, be possession-based first. He does that. His, his, his system actually gets us into the final third. The problem that we've got in the final third, for me, is I don't think we've got enough quality players. You Like, like Saverner, he can have a great game one day, can, you know, one goal, one assist, double up and stuff like that. And Johnson, to a degree, is similar, although I'm changing my opinion on him a little bit. 
But we've got I two in like that too. forward line outside of Sun that blow too hot and cold when you select them. If we had more players of better quality that were at it week in, week out, I think a lot of discussions we've had over the course of this season, you will not be having next season. No, I agree. I completely agree. This is where, where I say, if you, I mean, for me, Harry Kane is the best striker in the world. Not only that, he's probably one of the best at defending corners. The amount of times they would whip a corner in and he would be the first one there to head it away. It's not just a goal scoring that he used to do. He's to calm people down with his first touch. I don't think we've got any players like that that has got a first touch where you could fizz a ball at 100 mile an hour. He'd kill it. And it's almost like the game slows down. We yeah. don't have anyone with that kind of quality. And I think I think what, what us as Spurs fans, including myself sometimes, we try to fit square pegs in round holes. So let's try Sonny up front. Well, no, he's not a striker. Yeah. He's a left winger. He has yeah. to play on the left wing. And then we're saying, well, let's try Kulu at Cam or let's try Kulu at striker. No, if, if he can't play in right wing where supposedly his position is, then he needs to be sold and we need to get somebody who can rather than try to fit him in. Well, let's drop Madison and play Kulu. It doesn't work like that, in my opinion. Mm. Look, with Kulu, I do think there's a player there. I just think, yeah, know, when it comes to Kulisewski, I've seen more than enough when he first signed on the content and all that there is a player there. Now, he has struggled since that late, long injury layoff he's had last season, and he hasn't quite sort of got it back. But with Kulisewski, you know, Ange hauled him off at half time there against Luton, going, he keeps doing what I'm not asking him to do, cut inside. But you know he's left footed. Play him down the left hand side then and give him that opportunity to see what he can do down there. You might actually get complete different results. When it comes to the likes of Son, I completely agree with you. And I've been trying to say this all season. You know, I tried to warn people that you will miss Harry Kane in terms of the amount of winners and equalizers, which are points that he physically puts on the ball on, on the board with them goals. He's a hold up play in general, the way he can link other players in the passing ability. But most importantly, is the link up that he had with Son. Everyone's of the opinion now, Son's too old to play off the left, you have to play him down the middle. The reason why he's not getting the same numbers off the left is because he doesn't have the link-up play with Harry Kane. It's quite simple. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and for me, I think Andrew's just trying to get by this season. Some games with Son, some games with Richarlison. But for me, I, I just think that money, we have to go and get a proper striker. And we just have to yeah. buy a better quality in that forward area. I think everything up till then. And I know a lot of people say, but we score enough goals. But I just feel over the course of this season, there's a lot of games where fans come left away going for the amount of possession we had, we should create more. We should create a lot better goal scoring opportunities. And I feel like people moan about the amount of goals we concede. But if we were actually a lot more braver in possession and we actually killed off teams when we dominated possession, that kills off their belief, their confidence going forward. You don't concede as much going the other way. Yeah, I, I'm a big I'm a big believer in in, in like Fear. I know that sounds a bit silly, but fear. But even in like, I play seven aside, and you know, you you got the top team. Like, it's going to be a hard week this week, you know, lads. And then straight away, without even realizing, you've gone. It's going to be a hard week. That's already doubting yourself before you've even kicked a ball. Yeah. And I think that's. I think that is why City have dominated for so long. I, and personally, I don't think Liverpool have a great squad, but I think that they beat people before they even turn up. Mm. I think people are like, oh no, like. It's going to be a tough game, Salah, blah blah blah. And I think that we, if we had Son on the left, like you said, a good strike. If we had Harry Kane and you had Son and even Johnson getting in behind with somebody like Harry Kane, you, you're, you're talking of a completely different season, in my opinion. Hundred percent. If we, if we had someone as good as it, look, I, I argue to maybe take the gamble of the fact that Ange Postecoglou will come in here and turn Kane's head and get him to sign a new deal. You have yeah. Harry Kane. You're talking about a complete different season this season. You take him out. We're seeing the ups and downs. We're seeing the effects of it. And, you know, for me, I, I don't, I, I just don't believe a change in manager is the right thing to do because you're looking at other squad players then, you know, players that fit Andrew's system may not fit the next guy's system. You have to play about 10, 15 games before you realise where you need to improve again underneath that manager. For me, there's, you know, we're already halfway through that process. A little bit of sprinkling with a bit of star talent in there. I think we're well on our way. I actually don't think we're too far away despite the ups and downs this season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and like what we said about the new players, really, Kulu signed before and was in here. Um, and Timo Werner, in my opinion, there wasn't a club signing, but I think they said, look, it's, it's January. This is what we can afford. Who do you want out of X, Y, Z? And he's gone Timo Werner. But he's only, in my, from what I gather, he signed uh, Brennan Johnson, James Maddox, Madison, Vicario and Van der Ven. So four signings. And I can't complain really with any of them because even Johnson's numbers are pretty good now. So I can't really complain with any of them. 
we get another four in. You never know what, 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 what where, where we're at. Where we're at. Mm. No, 100%. I'm completely with you. And to Chris's point, he says, why are we talking about Harry Kane? He's gone longer. I get it. But we need to get back to that sort of level up front. You know, we didn't realise how good we had it until he's gone. You know, and that's why I keep mentioning it, because we need to get back to that level. Get back to that level. No one will be sitting there after games <laughs> talking about the problems up front or the lack of chances created or lack of, you know, maybe we, you know, we sc score a lot more with the possession that we dominate and stuff like yeah. that. That's In fairness, I Dave, though, he wasn't talking about Harry Kane. We was talking about a Harry Kane type of player. So it's yeah. not like we're saying we want Harry Kane back. We're saying if we had someone like Harry Kane that could either hold the ball up and play in the strikers in behind, like you said, with Son and a, and a partnership, yeah. or someone that could be clinical and finish in the box. And then, I, so it's not necessarily me saying, right, Harry Kane only. I'd, I'd be happy with someone, um, the guy from Juventus, Vlahovic, somebody like that that's just going to put the ball in the back of the net. That's all I want him to do. Mm. That That's all I want as well. And look, I'm not, a, you know, ideally we need two different options up front. You need a guy that you can cross the ball into and hold up and stuff like that. But then you also need someone like Son who's a weapon in behind when teams do come and play the high line and stuff. It's just about having different pieces of the puddle, pu pu puzzle and stuff like that. You know, you look at football, I know a lot of people are going on about the goals we can see, but you look at football in general, it's going that way. The way the referees are taught and the VAR is to try, you know, Try and bring as many goals into more goals into football. It's been an active campaign of theirs. You go back and read some of the statements that's come out over the last few years. That's what they want because they know the more goals in football, more entertainment, more revenue, and stuff like that. So I think it's part and parcel that you're going to concede goals now and stuff like that. You won't keep as many clean sheets as maybe in years gone by where football was a bit more defensive and stuff. Even Eric Gary Neville saying you won't go and win anything now with a defensive approach and stuff like that. You just won't. Football has changed. So, you know, you've got to get with the times and you just have to be more clinical up front. We've got so much possession, but yep. I hate to say it, I think we create less than what we did underneath Antonio Conte. Uh, yeah, I do. But I, I, I do, I do. But I also think we miss a hell of a lot more um, clear cut. -cha. I mean, I've seen Brennan Johnson miss him on the line. I've seen Timo Verno miss him on the line. Like, we've seen some big misses also that kind of change game. You, you nick 1-0 or 2-0. You sign Werner though, right? Everyone, like, if you were signing him to come in here and be a source of goals, it's yeah. never going to happen. We've years of evidence of that. And that's yeah. what you're going to get with Werner. One day he looks great, the next day he misses a sitter. And that's why they bring so much controversy around the fan base because the guys who support Werner, when he plays well, it's like, yes, yes, yes. You know, you're in the mud. And then when he plays crap, the guys who don't like Werner come out going, you're in the mud. But one thing, I, when I take a step back out of the immediate and look at it, the reason why that's happening is because he's not a 7 out of 10 every week. And that's a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said I said when he signed, people said, I, I, I had loads of arguments on Twitter and things. And people were saying to me about, um, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. And then he pl I said, trust me, it's not a good deal. Because points... Like, the amount of money you 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 spend counts to points, and he's not going to earn us any points from nothing, in my opinion. And then the first game he played was Man United, and he missed three blatant goals that a professional footballer should have been finishing. So I come back to Twitter and said, he's already cost us three points. What is a good deal? Mm. And then you just kind of get slandered. And I think, and I, I saw Ange on the weekend when they played Werner through, and he missed. And it's the only time I actually saw Ange get the up. He was fuming, and you think. People need to realise that he can see what we can see. He's not going home going, yeah, we was amazing, no problems yeah. here. He yeah. can see what we can see. And if, for example, we're going to get rid of um, the the Brian Hills and players like that, I wouldn't mind Timo Werner coming on for the last five or ten minutes. The same with Brennan Johnson. Mm -hmm. But you've got to improve the first team before you start thinking, oh, well, should we buy Timo Werner? Well, no, you only buy Timo Werner if you've already signed a first-team left winger. Yeah. No, look, I, I'm with you on that. For me, like, when you look at the Werner deal, right, cheap price, he's been an international player and stuff like that, right? You look at it on paper, you go, oh. But when you actually look at the way he's performed at Chelsea, you know, the way he's performed since he's gone back to Leipzig, he, he's just, he's, he's shot in front of goals. You look at some of the opportunities missed this season for Tottenham in front of goals. You know, he puts them away. You're talking about different games. Look, like you said, if if the likes of Gill, you know, people like that are being moved on and Werner's going to be a guy that, you know, comes in as a squad player, okay. But if we're signing him to improve our, our first 11, I am not on board with it whatsoever. Yeah, and, and I think 
if 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 that's the case you need to look at what our ambitions are if, if he's coming into to be our first team then i think that identifies that we're trying to be a top four team and that that's where we, it starts and ends if we bring in a proper left winger and timo Werner, i'm then like okay we, we we mean business we've got cover son can play there as well cover for up front you know you start to think oh good squad so I, I mean, I, I expected nothing. I expected eighth at the start of the season. I didn't expect to be playing this this good football, have this much possession now. I thought it would take a lot longer. Like you said, we lost Harry Kane on the last day of the season. We signed Johnson on the last day of the season. So that's a, enough in itself. And we had no pre-season. They just had air miles. Yeah, yeah. And that's a huge part as well, you know, the disruption in pre-season. That's, you know, and, and maybe you question it sometimes when we fade it out late in games. Has that got to do with pre-season where Ange is supposed to be, you know, using that to drill them into his fitness and all that? And again, more time to work on what he wants to work on and stuff. Obviously, you know, heading out to, uh, heading out where we did in monsoon season, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't help him get off to the ideal preparations yeah. and stuff like that. But look, James, my man, I've I've actually really enjoyed this call. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'm glad I'm glad you made it known that you wanted to come on, and I uh, I sent you the link. I've actually really enjoyed it. And please don't 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 make it the last time that you've 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 come here to talk to us. I've really enjoyed it. You've got a lot of good things to say. I uh, appreciate your time. I know you was going to go off and watch football, so I apologise for that. <laughs> well, do you know what, lad? You know, this, uh, I was going to go off and watch it, but I've, I've really enjoyed this call. You know, we I think think we've got. You've had a really good conversation there, so it's probably better than what I was. Anyway, I was only going to <laughs> that foot with a fry up anyway, so you've probably said oh. me a few pounds, <laughs> I'll come over, mate. We could share. <laughs> oh, for sure, like, for sure. I love a good fry up at times. But honestly, James, oh, by the way, you you mentioned that, uh, you know, do you go to games or, 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 or that? Are you in and around London? So, no, uh, I, I've got a, a bit of a different story. We used to. My son used to play for the academy. And oh, then... Wow. He got, we was there for about four years and then he got offered a uh, contract at Norwich. So we moved up to Norwich and he plays for Norwich now. So we used to, and then we used to get tickets for the club and stuff, but now obviously we moved. So it's yeah. a bit harder. I tried to just go to, to pre-season, to be honest, yeah. just because it's a lot cheaper traveling down for two of us. It's just a lot, to be honest. Oh, look, I understand the travel costs, you know, when we were coming over here from Ireland and stuff like that, you know, it's uh it's you know it's the travel that's more expensive than the tickets and stuff like that. Although I'm not happy with the prices they are going up. But how's your young lad getting on at Norwich? Yeah, good. Yeah, really, really good. Really good. Yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things. It's he plays three times a week and he loves it. So that's the most important thing. You know, the reason we kind of left Tottenham was just because it was. I mean, it's had changed a lot now, and we've heard a lot that's changed. But it was more of like a Instagram mum club. Does that make sense? So like that. that their mums were taking photos of like, oh, we're at Tottenham, blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of dive bombed. And the academy was awful. About, it was about three years ago. And then we left. But then two years later or a year or so later, it kind of improved. But yeah, we, we don't regret anything, to be honest. Look, I can understand that. I've often said it myself, you know, over the last few years with some of the tripe we've had to watch and the lack of pathway for these guys coming through. It, I wouldn't have put my son in the Tottenham Academy. You know, I would have said, look, I get you love the club and whatever you support it. But realistically, you know, there's no pathway to the first team. And, you know, there hasn't been for quite some time. I wouldn't have put them in there. So, no. I think, I think you probably made the right move in that regard. Fair play to you because it's a tough Yeah. It's, it's the amount of kids as well. I know it sounds silly, but London is so overpopulated that the, there was, say, for example, 10,000 kids training. And lucky enough, he was in probably the top 50. But 10,000, where we've come to Norwich, there's sort of 500. And he's in sort of like the top 20. So, it does make a lot of difference, you know? Yeah, no, it does, and I love fair play to you. You done the, you done the right thing there. And you know, it's uh, it's not easy keeping a kid on track in the academy and stuff like that as well. So, fair play to you. And look, I do wish him all the the best of success, and hopefully, you thank know, you, mate. Uh, you know, he goes on from strength to strength, and you know, look, he's at this point, so he's definitely going to have some sort of career in the game. Regardless. I need to retire soon, man. My knees are hurting. <laughs> Tell him to out and, and get on with the progression quicker, then, my lad. <laughs> in the game nowadays, and the wages they get paid, he might be able to retire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, great call in, my man. Great call in. And um, look, again, wish the son the best of luck. And hopefully, thank you, mate. We have a chat and hopefully, we'll speak again soon. Definitely. Take care. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, my man. Thank you, mate. Bye bye.
Oh, guys, great call in there from James. I actually really enjoyed that. Great call in from James. Good conversation there. Good football conversation. And, uh, you know, when you see James in and around the chat, make sure, you know, keep in contact with him. Ask him how his son's getting on. Always wish him the best of luck. But look, guys, that is it from me. I am going to end it off. Um, your boy's hungry, so he's going to go and have a bit of dinner. Maybe not as big of a one as I would have had, you know, about 45 minutes ago. So that's probably done me a good, huge favor there. And guys, I'll see you back here, you know, over the course of the next couple of days. You all go off and have a great evening. City did beat Villa, which helps us out massively. But guys, we move. Come on, you Spurs. In the big hands, we trust. We never stop. Thank you all for your support tonight. Thank you for tuning in. See you back here tomorrow. <laughs>